Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. It's Tuesday Nights Live, and this is the Roundtable Super Spreader. So, what is that? All right, so last year we kicked off Cars on the Move monthly roundtable as a private paid group session for carriers working to network, learn, and share information. And this year we opened it up to a live free format on Tuesday nights, and the response has been great. Um, not only do we see new folks that are looking into getting into car hauling, but we've got veteran transporters and owner operators that are looking to expand their businesses. And it's not just carriers that are welcome on the roundtable. We want dealers that are trying to better understand carriers and grow their Rolodex. Um, we want brokers that also are trying to better understand carriers and find ones that they like working with. We want dispatchers that are trying to better understand carriers and understand you know, the interaction when they're booking loads. Because if you can't work with a carrier, then you're not moving a load. But if you're a carrier, you have to understand expectations, planning, and communication because without that, it does not matter how well you strap down a wheel. So tonight, we're going to start with Ty Thompson, Cars on the Move. We're going to add Julie Delp, Nationwide Auto Transport. She's our featured guest. We're really excited to have Julie on the show tonight. Lionel Yates of CY Financial Solutions, talking about insurance, because we know how important that is. And Mark Grodeke of Superflow Systems, Again, talking about technology and how important that component is. And then we're going to open the gates to the super spreader. Um, I want to say that we were looking to really expand the group tonight. But I think we got something important to talk about. And that is that there is a disconnect. Um, there's a disconnect in the business. And we need to, we need to get back into that. So uh, these carriers have a lot on their minds. Please join us tonight in the live chat ask your questions share your thoughts grow your business because it's tuesday nights live on auto transport intel i'm jay your host welcome back to the show Hey, Mike Jack. One, two, one, two. How is it? We okay? Looks a little hot. It's a little hot tonight. So we'll try and check that. And welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. This is the Roundtable Super Spreader. And so too soon? I don't know. I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I hope it's. I hope it's just right. I want the porridge just right. Listen, if this is your first time here. I want you to feel welcome. Please do feel welcome. You can ask questions. You can share information. Join the live chat. Put in your company information, your URL, your phone number, your website, your rates, whatever it is, because we want to connect with you. We want you. We want to help you, and maybe you can help us. Maybe you can connect to a friend. I want you to say hello in the live chat. I'm going to go in there in a few minutes and say hello to the live chat, to you. And after that, we're going to go into, at the quarter hour, is industry news. Now, uh, the news just keeps on coming. And we're not going to focus on bad news as much as news that will impact and help you grow your business. Dealers, carriers, brokers, dispatchers. We've got national news, social media news, front of the store, back of the store, what's being talked about, auto transport, tech. 
vehicle logistics news, etc. We're going to do that. And then at the 40 minute mark, we're going to bring in Ty. This is our fourth round table this year. And, uh, and it's pretty much every month, give or take. And so Ty and I are going to talk about characteristics of a car hauler. This is going to be pretty interesting. Um, then we're going to bring in Julie. After we kind of set the stage, Julie is, I believe, the owner of Nationwide Auto Transport. She's going to clarify that for me. Jay, you probably should have probably should have checked that before the show. So much to work on and so much to talk about. So Julie's going to let us know and help me out. And then we're going to bring in Lionel with insurance, Mark with technology, and begin to broaden the base before we just go ahead and... and oh, the cowbell. That's right, I got my... I got my cowbell handy, so go ahead and fill, uh, go ahead during the super spreader, join the event, share your information, ring the cowbell. We're going to do that too. Man, I see a lot of people coming in the live chat. I can't wait to say hello to the live chat. I just want to say this. <laughs> Not that. I want to say this. Do me a favor. Help me out, right? I'm hitting wrong buttons and I need your help. Hit the right buttons. Go ahead and hit the like button. That's good. Thank you very much. And then you can, you see it. Click share, click copy, grab that YouTube link. You can text it, email it, share it on social media, send it to a friend. Yeah, it's a long show. Actually, the uh, round table is like two and a half hours plus. So if you know somebody that's trying to grow their business, and man, they're going to love this because this is not all, this is not all roses and puppy dogs. Not at all. Not by a long sight. And if you just don't, you know, you're ready. You, you, you realize, you hear the people talk, you want to get more, go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up, become an ATI insider, and join the crowd. Because I, there is something going on. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of people searching for information. And, and we, that's, what we, that's what we're here for. And we're not, man, it's not all. I know, I got the, you seen me with the dollar bills. No, this is not real. It's not real. We have a lot to talk about. Guys, but I'll tell you what, I do want to help you. We've got so much good information. Stick around. We're going to be right back in the live chat. Thank you, United Road, for the information you've been sharing lately on the channel, from the information about Holly and Holly Pro, and how to uh, how to be an award winner in the Carrier Awards at Holly, and then also from there to go on to NVTA. We announced that that was last week. That was a great show, and it man that that is exactly in line with the kind of thing we're talking about tonight, which is. Uh, what's it take to be a great carrier in auto transport? Uh, certainly isn't a straight line, and there's some major hurdles along the way. So if you're looking for an opportunity with program discounts and a business resource center, United Road wants to talk to you about that, nvta.org. You're going to want to check that out. Now I see, I see it. That's it, man. Ty is the first to ring the cowbell. Thank you so much. ATI to the moon. Really appreciate that. Um, that means so much. As you know, right, we work on this channel. Going live four times a week, wow. That is, uh, that is, um, that's a full boat for me. And so here we go. Let's go ahead and jump into the live chat. I got to back this up. Um, yes, Ty was in here first. The best car shipping business channel. Thank you so much, Ty. Terry Brown is in here to give the thir first thumbs up. Thank you, Terry Brown. And don't forget, thank you, Terry. As a reminder, you can you can hit that like button. Please do hit the like button. It really helps out. John Finest Towing and Recovery is in here. What's going on? John's going to be on the uh, round table tonight. Joel Hawk is in here. What's going on, Joel? I think we're going to see you Friday in Cars on the Move. I hope so. That's going to be cool. Andrew Matthews. What's going on, Andrew? Great talking with you guys yesterday. And listen, yeah, as Andrew can tell you, if you are 
do do me a favor, Andrew. Um, just drop a little, few little hints. We had it. We had a one hour meeting yesterday, and just talk about the industry. And I was really, you know, I love having meetings like that because it reminds me how much. Actually, I know more than I think. And yet, and yet, I'm not out there loading cars on haulers. So I need, you know, I need the experts in the round table. Anyways, it's amazing to help and catch up. So if you need help, send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I'm pretty sure I just honked my own horn. So, uh, but I really do want to help. And it was great talking with you, Andrew. That was my whole point. Lincoln Guzman's in here. What's up, family? What's going on, Lincoln Guzman? And uh, future Futuro GT? Dang it. All right, I'm going to look that up right now. That company name is, put it in the, hey, do me a favor, put it in the, uh, I'm going to look it up, I'm going to get it. It is, um, I want you to put it, in Futuro GT Logistics, there it is. Told you I'd look it up right here live on the show. Mwah. Kimberly is in here, what's up Kimberly, thanks for tuning in and helping me in the live chat. I need you. Jim Barrett's in here, hey, what's up Jim Barrett, so Jim Barrett, Jim Barrett gave me some, uh, you know, helpful criticism. And I appreciate that. Because um, I realize, I mean, we're, we're now, we're kind of at a next level. And now we're, you know, as I, as I like to say, the experiment is over. And so to, to make sure that everybody gets the most they can out of this channel, you know, tell me how I can help you. I, doggone it. I, I need to know. I just need to know. So thank you, Jim Barrett. Ray Moran is here. What's up, Ray from United Road? What's going on? Thank you, Ray. Thank you, United Road. Christina's here. What's going on, Christina? Lionel Yates is here. What's going on, Lionel? Cool. Lionel's going to be on the show in a bit. Mark Rodeke's here. What's going on? You love the roundtable? Actually, the roundtable does pretty well. Um, and that's actually why we expanded it, just to be kind of a free format. And it really is. It's great. And we need... And you know what? Here's the difficulty. To try to think about, okay, how do we... How do we enca encapsulate all the things that need to be covered in order to provide roundtable experience, knowledge, uh, and ideas? And I got this, I got a great YouTube comment. <laughs> I can't wait to share it. Uh, Fritz Duval says, hello, what's up, Fritz? Michael Riley with NVTA, what's up? And thank you, Fritz, for, um, you can, you know what, you can share. If you've got a meme, a photo, uh, shoot, maybe you got a fortune cookie that just makes sense. Send it to me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And Kimberly, if you'll put that in there, that'd be great. Vlad Fedotov, what's up, Vlad? We see Vlad periodically. Thank you so much for tuning in, Vlad. John Cochran is here. Uh, John, I think John is on the show tonight, actually. John, L-A-I, autotransport. All right, John. Cool, man. Uh, Lloyd Vanover, he's with us tonight. River City Services, what's going on? Very cool, very cool. Uh, oh, Joe Bercari from Midwestern Car Carriers is in here. What's going on, Joe? Great to see you in here. And um, and, and for folks, that if you get the email, the Tuesday night, uh, well, it goes out on Tuesday mornings, and then there's the LinkedIn stuff too. But if it helps you kind of jog your memory and give you a chance to see what maybe we're going to cover on Tuesday nights live. Let me know if that helps you, or if you need, if maybe if you don't get that, let me know. Send me an email. Hey guys, KJS Transport from Wisconsin is here. What's going on, KJS? JD Mickle, gonna try my best to stay online as much as I can. Well, thanks, JD. That's super cool. I appreciate it. Uh, Marco Majore, what's going on, Marco? I think it's close, right? I got, I got close. Majore, Majore. Majore. <laughs> hey Jay, you're live. You're you're still speaking. Darren, secure auto transport. What's going on? That's awesome, man. That is so cool. Bart Landon is here. Landon's auto transport. So cool. Thank you guys so much. Yes, and the information is in the live chat for NVTA and United Road. Faith and Freedom. That's Jeff Bass. What's going on? Fast Eddie Silver Mint just walked in with a burrito. Well, well, hey, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, you know, we are live. We are alive. We are here together. Andrew Serica is here. Holly won't message me back. I've been trying to set up with them for over a month. Ah, uh, well, 
Well, here's the, you know what, and that's going to happen. And that's the thing, you know, one of my, that's another one of the things I got to try to do is I got to try to help. I know there's portions of the community trying to communicate. I want to help in the best way I can. That's great feedback. And um, I believe United Road um, or somebody from Holly or MVTA is in the live chat tonight. If you do not hear from them, please send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And I want to help. I want to try to help. I can't fix everything, but I do want to try to help. Jim Barrett, this is a great channel. Offers lots of help to both experienced. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Wow, the, the, the live chat just jumped on me. Let's chat. Uh, I was reading something and I lost my place. Hey, man, I just walked in with a burrito. <laughs> I'm going to use that. I'm going to start using that. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Oh, the set. No, the sound is a little loud. Check, check. Mike, Mike, Mike. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay, cool. Terry Brown. BM is here. What's up, BM? Marco. Came close. A for effort. Okay, thank you. VDT. Grant Vandola United Road. Howdy. What's going on? Very cool, man. That is amazing. Wow, right on time. Okay, perfect. It's time to go into the live chat. So I'll tell you what. Here's do this. Don't go any... Oh, no, we already did the live chat. We were just in it. Jay, we're going into uh, industry news next. It's at the quarter hour. So everybody stick around. We're going to do some industry news. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll be right back. Superflow Systems is excited to introduce DispatchCenter.com a full-service load board for brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, featuring integrations with Truckify mobile app and iTruckPay. Use Route Scout technology to build your routes. Maximize truck capacity. Stay loaded at the highest available revenue with the least amount of driving miles. Tell us your lanes. Loadification will alert you to new loads posting in your route. Views instant load notifications sent with BookNow features Search and book loads directly through the Truckify mobile app. Brokers and shippers, post your loads to Dispatch Center. Give authorized carriers the opportunity to instantly book your loads. Dispatch Center powers the Truckify mobile app, allowing instant load assignment to the driver. Truckify will send inspection reports, geolocated pickup and delivery photos, BOLs, and invoices back to the broker. Brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, Dispatch Center, and Truckify have what you need to be more profitable every day. Are you signed up with Dispatch Center? Do you not know why? So you go to DispatchCenter.com, click on Log In or click on Sign Up. And actually, Mark's going to be with us. Not only is Mark in the live chat, and he can answer your questions... Um, Superflow Systems, Dispatch Center, or maybe you're looking for a CRM. You have mobile app questions. If it's software and it's auto transport, he wants to talk about it and help you. And now we're expanding the network to the digital live auctions, etc. He's with us, and the information's in the live chat. And by the way, you know what, Jeff? You can actually be a professional bell ringer. It's easy. It's just, you know, a couple, couple clicks of the super chat, and you are a professional bell ringer. Okay, let's go into some industry news. Yes, this is show 185. Roundtable Super Spreader. There, See, there you go. Thank you so much, Mark. Mark Grodeke, thank you so much for your participation and support of Auto Transport Intel. It really means a lot. And you know what? That's one of the things, like Ty and I like to talk about. If you, if you become part of the community and then you advertise or you just participate, we actually talk about you. And we want to, we like to see folks in the network prosper and communicate. Just like with that, with that comment about the load board and being unable to communicate, well, now this gives us an opportunity to try to reciprocate. So let us know how we can help you. See, there it is. Ray Moran is right there. Yes, Ray, thank you so much. That's what this is all about. That's how the community works. That's what it is, man. Cars on the move. Roundtable Super Spreader. So uh, so I got your attention. Super Spreader got your attention. Okay, Cars on the Move Roundtable. Yeah, it's mostly carriers tonight. And we are going to be talking about, you know, you know what what is happening with carriers trying to grow their business. Man, it is a long road. And we got the folks to prove it. 
Uh, this was, you know, if you miss some of these shows, you can go back and watch and learn. If you're a carrier and you're struggling, you will love this content. Oh, hey, thanks a lot, Lincoln Guzman. We got another professional bell ringer in here. Thank you so much, Lincoln. I really, really appreciate that. And I'm so glad that we can help. And um, I think Catherine's going to be on the show tonight. And you're in the live chat. That's how we do it. Thank you so much, Lincoln. You can go back and watch. This is the show from January, Cars on the Move Roundtable. Then from February, you got Groundhog's Car Hauling Roundtable. Uh, last month, we had the Car Shipping Roundtable. And now, of course, we're having the Super Spreader. So, I don't know what we're going to call the one in May, but I'm looking for help. So let me know. Put it in the live chat. What should we call the Roundtable in May? So I got this comment. Um, I had this video, Car Hauler Boot Camp, right? And which is kind of early days of Roundtable. All right, so <laughs> Eric says... 90 minutes in, still nothing. I skipped through the rest of the video. Nope. I'm going for an interview with a car hauling company tomorrow. And I thought I'd come here and learn stuff. Nope. Well, I take that back. You must be mindful of load distribution and overhang. This video is about if you want to start your own business as a car hauler, let's talk about load boards and DOT and documentation and insurance and nothing about actually putting cars on trailers or load distribution, etc. Thank you, Eric. Actually, I've thought about this quite a bit and I really appreciate that comment. So I want you guys, please keep that in mind as we continue tonight with our discussion with carriers on the round table. You know, on the auto transport industry ecosystem, OEMs, auctions, dealers, shippers, services, brokers, carriers, equipment, regulations, loads, I point that out because it's not just carriers. Now, without carriers, you aren't moving anything. But it's not just carriers. It's really, a, it's a big ecosystem. It's gigantic. However, on the round table, we're going to focus on carriers and then we're going to hit a bunch of other topics. Capiche, you know auto transport intel, back of the store, front of the store, back of the store, transport parking lot, front of the store, where they sell the cars, and back and forth and around it goes. It is the year of the hybrid where digital meets physical, physical meets digital. That's why we bring in friends, we meet friends, we bring them on the show like ARI Fleet Management. If you don't know who, what ARI is, who they are, what they do, yes, go check out that show. Yes, thank you, Black Book, for being a part of it. Yes, thank you, Max Digital and Tim Scoutalus. Man, we learn a lot from you. In fact, we learn so much, we put you on Cars on the Move on the last Friday of every month. Love those shows with Tim. Yes, we talk about crazy things like home delivery, but it's, it's a significant portion of... The industry as the consumer sees it, right? Car think Carvana, think Vroom. So we keep adding more friends. We have the Carrier Dealer Remarketer Show with Paul, Ty, Tim, Michelle, Mike. Yes, awesome stuff. Uh, Plateau, another great show, right? Overarching technology. Thank you, Aaron, Dean, Cameron, Robbie for being on that show. IARA, more friends, bringing more friends into the community space, talking about transportation with Jeff, Tony, Michelle, and Dave. That was a great show. Um, and then, of course, United Road recently added to uh, the programming on Auto Transport Intel. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Ray. Ray's in the live chat tonight. And last week, we had National Vehicle Transporters Alliance. I mean, this is breaking news, man. Uh... They were on the show last Tuesday night, and it wasn't officially announced till Wednesday. So, kudos, man. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and they even posted on social media, in case you missed it, NVTA was featured on ATI's YouTube channel. And there it is, Jason, Ray, and Michael. If you want to learn more about NVTA, go nvta.org or contact me. Contact Ty. And we want to add some more friends. Now, I, I don't know this fellow, but at America's Auto Auction in Austin, he put a video on LinkedIn, a pre-sale update video. Yeah, man. I know that the, the, the that lane starts at 120. That's just one frame from the video. Because it's a packed house at the auction, everything is selling, 
and it, and it ain't selling cheap. And that's why Ty's on Clubhouse talking about it. Go on Clubhouse, get on your iOS device, go find Ty, Ty Transport Guy on Clubhouse. Dealers, auctions, and carriers on Clubhouse, man. It's happening. Well, thank you, John. John G. at Finest Towing and Recovery is a professional bell ringer. Thank you so much, John. John's going to be on the show tonight. Can't wait to catch up with you. And, you know, that's one of the things about tonight's roundtable is um, we've got, there are, man, it is, it is not money raining city. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in your neck of the woods, but there's some crazy stuff going on. Wow, we got a we got another professional bell ringer. In Chris Chamberlain is a professional bell ringer. Thank you so much, Chris. Wow, this is great. Thank you guys so much. It really, and it's true. Everything goes back into the channel. I feel like I'm glued to this chair, <laughs> literally. And um, between the equipment and everything else, and the time. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I really, really appreciate it. It means so much. And so what I try to do also then, as I'm glued to the chair, like this was a live event today. Drive Time was live, and I was able to ask them about their carrier network, and they actually replied to me. A lady came out live, wish I had my camera, and, and replied, JW, in the audience, and because I had a question about their carrier network, and they said it was something they were, they were actually working on growing and developing. That happened live on LinkedIn today. So, shout out to Drive Time. Uh, 5,000 carriers, 5,000 loads by June 5th. It's 555 on Dispatch Center. Go to DispatchCenter.com. This is how you get your car shipping news. It's on Auto Transport Intel. You put it up on the big screen. Put up your feet. Unless you're driving. Speaking of, I think it's time to ask Larry. Now, I don't know if you do this, but you should. What you want to do is go to dispatchcenter.com forward slash ask Larry, and you're going to submit your questions. Ready? Here we go. The world's first stoplight was built in 1868. In what city? Interesting. Paris, London, New York, Philadelphia. Only questions tonight. You got to go to dispatchcenter.com forward slash ask Larry. There it is. It's in the live chat. I think you could probably just click on that. It'll launch the window. And uh, in the top, the first, what is it, Mark? The first three submissions, first five submissions win a prize. Something like that. Here we go. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount to ship a non-running 2014 Passat from Tucson to Montgomery, Alabama? And by the way, this is Larry the Llama. Larry is the Quotify, the TAQ, Transport Auto Quoter. Go to transportautoquoter.com. Larry knows his stuff. He knows what it takes to get a car moved based on current market prices. So if you need help, Alexa, what is it? What do you say, Mark? And do you have to enable the skill? What state currently has the most Copart locations? Ooh, I think I got a good guess on this one, right? Although, well, California's in there. Oh, and Florida's in there. Man, that is actually pretty tough. Good one, Larry. Okay, here we go. What is the most appropriate carrier pay amount to ship a 2017 Ford Escape from San Francisco to Cheyenne, Wyoming? <laughs> oh, man. Just when you think you knew, right? Oh, Alexa, Alexa open Quotify. <laughs> Right? Right. Good one, Mark. Thank you very much. Ooh, we got some good guesses in here. Six ninety five is that uh, previous guess. You set my Alexa off. <laughs> that is so awesome. One more. Here we go. What was the most common DOT driver violation in 2020? 
19. Ooh, Brian would know this one. Speeding, no seatbelt, improper logs. Ooh, improper logs. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with him. I think I'm gonna go with improper logs because I don't know if ELD misuse is actually a thing, but I like it. Thank you so much, Larry. That was amazing. Improper logs. Yeah, I'm gonna go with improper logs. Okay, here we go. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. So be sure. Do go to autotransportintel.com, click on sign up, become an ATI insider today, talk to Ty, join the next round table, get the email, and more. Oh, it's time. It's actually really time. Great. So I was I was feeling a bit uh, parched. Okay, here's what's going to happen. You're going to listen to Ty for 30 seconds. We're going to be right back. Hey, it's Ty, transport guy, hanging out in the transport parking lot always. If you want to learn to grow your business, I think you should probably go to ATI Insider, sign up for free, don't give anybody any money. Uh, and with that, you get, uh, I don't know, I think you get a 20 minute phone call, which usually turns into a little longer than that. You get to join the round table, uh, which is once a month. And at the round table, what we do is we get pretty detailed about how to build your business, how to connect with dealers, how to connect with auctions, how to build a lane. So if you're new, if you saw a YouTube video and says, I can make a million dollars in a week and I want to get into car hauling, Ty, and maybe you own a Stinger, maybe you own a little rollback. Man, how do I figure this out? Should I buy this? Should I buy that? What do I need? How do I do it? You get to make relationships with other carriers. It's kind of not a one size fits all. It's here a little bit about you. Go to the ATI Insider. Get signed up. I can help you. I really can. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. That is Ty. He wants to help you. If you're not busy enough counting money, okay. Okay, Jay, we got it. All right, let's do some news. At uh, We're going to see, we are seeing, new inventory drops 36% in March. Wow, that is a lot, man. I mean, that's huge. According to the car shipping experts at Edmunds, new car vehicle inventory on sale at dealerships nationwide is down 36% compared to a year ago, and prices are rising for both new and used vehicles as a result. The chipset shortage has snowballed into a bigger crisis. Major auto plants are implementing temporary, temporary closures. Retail customers are being offered fewer choices, paying higher prices, while fleet customers are likely seeing orders delayed. Craziness, man. Crazy. Perfect storm. Uh, so I saw this. This is interesting. It's a, if it's off-lease, it's a DESA. 80% of North America's off-lease inventory available before any auction. Ooh. It's a fact. Off-lease exclusive on Odessa.com. The biggest selection of low-mileage, one-owner vehicles. There you go. Get easy one-click access to thousands. Because this is what's happening. The nicer the used car you have... Man, the mo money, making mo money. Automotive news: uh, Biden eyes fifty billion dollars for chip production and research. So that's news and interesting. Intel, in fact, is talking to produce chips for automakers within six to nine months. We got a chip. We got it. We're gonna. Do we have a siren? We have to ring the chip siren. I don't think we have a siren. Oh yeah, we do. We yeah. We need chips. Hey. Chips, please. So anyways, we have a chip shortage. Okay. Uh, about 100 Ford dealers to invest in dedicated Bronco stores. This got my attention. I know. We're not... I'm not a car dealer. We, we're talking auto transport. But this is interesting. Imagine that you're a carrier and you're working with your dealer and you hear this. About 100 Ford dealers are to invest in dedicated Bronco stores. Even before the new Bronco goes on sale, some dealers are planning to turn the SUV and its offshoots into essentially a third Ford brand. Okay? It's an idea originated by dealers, not a top-down edict from the factory. 
Ford officials expect about 100 dealers to build Bronco showrooms, which will be near or connected to existing Ford stores, featuring the SUV's horse logo instead of the blue oval. Okay, really interesting. Ford's design calls for a sleek 3,800 square foot building with an outdoor fire pit, indoor accessory wall, room to display three vehicles. The exterior includes black paneled side and graystone entryway. Man, this uh, this is one heck of a dealership. Andrew Frick, Ford's head of sales, said the automaker came up with three ways dealers can highlight the Bronco. A standalone showroom, an expansion of existing showrooms or ex displays that can be added to the showroom. And Ford is working on a Bronco-based pickup. Expected in 2024, Ford expects the hundreds of add-ons it is rolling out to help boost dealer profits. Interesting to follow the thought process of moving forward to get the customer's attention. Um, are you not sure about Retail Marketing 101 for, this is the, now this is the consumer driveway inventory stuff. I'm gonna tune in, this is tomorrow. This is at noon Eastern time tomorrow. Now you wanna become a member on the NAFA. I don't know if there's, I'm gonna go with, you know, as the, as. There's TMI, and then there's not enough MI, and uh, we might be on that one. So, we're going to go to the next. Um, Enterprise Car Sales announced that has generated more than $12 billion in total loan volume. Why does he point this out? Coupled with the launch of Start My Purchase functionality, flexibility to start their purchase from home with delivery. Who's working with Enterprise to deliver these cars? That's what I want to know. Because this isn't lot to lot. This is lot to home. You know, we talk about unicorn land. Don't, don't, don't be doing that. Don't be thinking you can get good, fast, and cheap. But we know it's out there. People, you know, you can get good and cheap. You can get fast and good. You can get cheap and fast. You do, you know this. Do you know this? Now, I saw this because I've asked, why, why do, where, where did the idea come from? Oh, you can't see here. Let's move that window. Where did the idea come from that uh, the longer, let's see here. Who said that the price per mile decreases as the mileage increases? Oh, okay, gotcha. Next. Uh, so how are we doing? Is this, is this working out? How far are you going to make it? You know? Don't be making any quick turns. Okay, next. All right. So, uh, oh, also don't be doing this. Right. Do you, do you know what happens a second later in this video? Okay. Um, cars on the move. Thank you so much, Cars on the move with Ty. We're now moving closer to the round table. Ty gets texts all the time he's always on the phone he's getting messages from po folks that want to help catch up on what's good in their neighborhood what's what, what business choices they're making so we're going to be talking about some of that tonight uh jd is hiring i told jd i would put this in the industry news thank you jd for sharing that on social media and on auto transport intel auto transport intel live four times so there it is chris what for the week? I know, you know, and I got a couple of those sent to me today. So, the word is getting out, and that's a good thing. So, newsflash: if if you right, if you if you've been picking on wedgies every day for like the last I don't know twenty five years or whatever it is since high school, uh, we want to help. So send us your send us the future flip of the week flip of the tomorrow the flip of yesterday we need to talk about it we do need to talk about it we're gonna move on from just the you know bullyism to educationism let's try to do that four times a week we do talk about these things on dot compliance noon every wednesday dot compliance join brian Riker. see there's another one don't be the flip of the week watch dot compliance on wednesdays at noon you know Dispatching Live is uh, load board search advice every Thursday at noon, 90 minutes with me and Sue. And thank you, Jim. I will try not to interrupt her as much this Thursday. Tune in. Let me know how I'm doing. 
And I'm really, I'm going to try my best. But you know, between muggle problems, all the cash I got to count, you know, I got to, I got to shake, shake up the dice and, uh, you know, place my bets. There's just a lot happening. So I'll try to do my best. Cards on the move is Fridays at noon, dealers, auctions, and carriers. Oh, hey, that brings us to tonight. We are connecting dealers, auctions, and carriers. We are sharing information. This was a great show. Thank you, Tim. And thank you, Sky. And talk about, again, this is great stuff. Because what, wait, wait, okay. Pull over, the, you pull the truck over. You're like, you know what? That's it. I'm going to go in that dealership and I'm going to try and drive up some business. What am I going to say? Well, I mean, here's what we do. We tell you, we tell you what to say. Just go ahead and take a screenshot with your phone of this. Take it into the dealership and show the dealer and just say, is this true? Is it true? That's all you got. You get, you get three words. Is this true? Wow. Really? Awesome. You are really tuned in. You are so tuned in that you're going to be here next Tuesday night on New Vehicle Shipping by Rail. That's going to be an interesting show. Looking forward to that. You're welcome, JD. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. This is the Car Shipping Business Channel. I'm Jay, your host. It's Auto Transport Intel. It's every Tuesday night and, um, and four times a week with those other shows we just went through. So now what it's time to do. You know what time it is? It is time. I need to, um, let's see here. Let me pull up the Zoom meeting invite. I've already sent Ty a link. Ty should be um, joining that meeting here in a second. So I'm going to launch the Zoom meeting. And, uh, and, um, and while we're doing that, let's go into the live chat. Let me hit that button so we hear the doorbell ring. Let's see what else is... Oh, uh, Wendy says also a rubber shortage. Ouch. Thanks, Wendy. Oh, and there's, let's see. Okay, so Julie, here's what we're going to do. Hey, Julie, I'm going to put you back in the waiting room for a few minutes, okay? So let's see here. Let's do, do this. Uh, Julie goes back in the waiting room. Ty is about to join us live on screen. What else did I miss in the live chat? Um, oh, Catherine says hello to the family. Great. We had some answers on the Larry. Okay, cool. It is time. Ty is here. And he's ready to go. And we're going to uh, crank up the Cars on the Move monthly roundtable. So, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, let me do I I like to, you know, I like to have the... Uh, There we go. What's up, Ty? <laughs> what was that? Was that well, it, it says drum roll. <laughs> okay. I didn't catch it. How's the audio tonight? Last week, I think it was bad, or the week before, whatever, last time I was here. Yeah, for whatever reason, I couldn't hear you as well, but I don't have any of that problem now. Can you Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. good. Hey, okay, before we get rolling, there's right. two people, Victory Lap and Terry Brown. If they're here in the live chat and they want to come on, I'll need to pass that on to you. So if they're in the live chat, they need to holler and let you know because I think I might have, it may have slipped through the crack. No, <laughs> no problem at all. I don't, yeah, I don't have Devin or Terry on my list. But um, if, so if they want to come in, just absolutely. And, and it goes for anybody else. If you, you know, if you if you see like, wow, man, I, I should be a part of this group. Let us know. What, how, what's the best way to do this? Are you going to email me or well, they can shoot me a text or just put okay. an email? Yeah, whatever. Just have them shoot me a text and I'll somehow translate it to you. We'll figure it out. So here is Ty Cell. All right. 417-483 two seven six four so there's ty cell you can text ty send him him what, what do you want you want the email address yeah that'd be good okay that's what that's what we need to get him the link yeah the exactly link. i need the email address mm -hmm. right so oh, and so, one more thing when yeah. you okay so I, I tell everybody that like around nine central time you're, you're gonna send out the the invite is that right yeah that's pretty close yeah Okay, cool. Yeah, Just making sure. Perfect. I mean, we've got we got Julie, Lionel, and Mark, um, and only fifteen minutes to do it. But yeah, no, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Hey, that's how we run this place, right? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> this is a one-man show, two-man show. <laughs> but but, one at, man but show. As, as of this moment, we're right on time. So Good. let's do this. Yeah. What you said, okay, there's two things. And I'm going to say this first. We never told anybody to be a car hauler, right? No, matter of fact, I, I'm glad you brought that up. In, and I think it may have something to do with that comment in your YouTube comments. But uh, no, I don't. And a matter of fact, I've had a lot of people pay actually pay me money and at the end of the conversation thank me for telling them the truth and they decided to do something different. So <clears throat> we don't, I don't. I don't think you do either, but I don't actually, I don't think anybody in our group and you know, you'll hear Lionel here in a little while, but I don't think we have anybody in our group that says, <clears throat> this is easy. This is great. This is, you know, you can make a lot of money and uh, you know, you just got to work hard. I, I don't even say that. So in my opinion, it's, it's a very difficult business. And that, you know, we talked about the characteristics of a car hauler. You and I kind of brought that up and I thought it's kind of interesting because <clears throat> Some of these characteristics are just life characteristics, but in the car hauling business and the car hauling world, these these are really, in my opinion, they really stand out. So, certain things like are you are you determined, right? Are you persistent? Are you friendly? Are you a servant? Are you a giver? You know, and you start looking at some of these and you start thinking, what a giver? What does a giver have to do with hauling cars? Well, <clears throat> I like to look at it like this. And this is pretty backwards, but I look at who is who is the customer, right? And for me, for 20 years, it's always been the car dealer in the auction. And if you watch these guys or you follow these guys, they are very giving people. They give to the community. They give to the people that work for them. They incentivize people and, and they give. And so I like to look at it like <clears throat> this kind of this culture. If I'm If I'm working for somebody don't I want to emulate that? Don't I want to be like that? I mean, maybe, maybe not. I mean, there are plenty of car dealer guys that are jerks and we all know that, but at the same time, I know a lot of car dealers and I know a lot of car dealers are incredible people that really care about other people. So <clears throat> these characteristics, what I'm getting at is that the business itself is I've done it for 20 years. I've owned a fleet of 20 stingers. I've had owner operators. I've, I've been a dealer. I've been a broker. I've been a, a carrier all at the same time. And I've had a lot of drivers and I understand that there's really nothing easy about this. There, I mean, there's just not, you know, it, it doesn't matter what part of, of the business you're in. If you're a three car, if you're a six car, seven car, nine car, you own a fleet. There's, there's always a challenge every day and it's always something to do with the car or a customer. So if you, if you have a short fuse, I said this last Friday, if you have a really short fuse, this may not be the business for you. And, and we're not trying to be mean. We're just trying to let you know there, there are things that happen throughout the course of a day that can really set a guy off, especially if he's got a short fuse, for example, <clears throat> where's the gate pass? <laughs> right <laughs> where's the gate pass uh i thought you said it was at odessa no i told you it was at Mannheim. i need it now you know and in the, the then you've got the dot on your back then you've got the insurance premium guy yelling at you then you've got fuel going up and then you've got uh, your customers i mean just there are plenty of things that <clears throat> can really affect your day so who are you that's what that's what i like to come back to know who you are and be honest about it. Take a good look at the mirror and find out what it's okay to not know anything about the business. That's what we're here for. But before you dive in here, are you getting in this business just to make money? Are you running from something to get to something else? That may not be a good idea. So as we talk about these things, and as I talk to all the carriers that come through your show, Jay, your platform that you built, what we get to do is we get to really try to help people. And you know, I mean, there might be 15, 20, 25 people on here tonight. I've had them talk to them. We know them. We help them. We do our best to, to point and direct and maybe take a step back even. So it's, it's a really exciting opportunity. <clears throat> and it's even more exciting if you look at it with through the right set of glasses with all the changes that are occurring in the last 12 months. 
some people might say, man, this is just like old guys like me would say, you know, I'm done. I don't, I don't like load boards. I don't like all this technology. I don't like ELD. I, I'm done. And then now more people are trying to shove different things down my throat and expect me to do this and expect me to do that. <clears throat> well, you can look at it that way, or you can look at it like it's opportunity. And that's kind of the direction that Jay's going when he talks about this hybrid model. And I say this all the time, Jay and I come from two completely separate ends of the spectrum in car hauling. When I first met Jay, I had no idea what a dispatcher was and a, <laughs> I knew what a load board was, but I never used one. <laughs> so we would spend hours trying to figure out what do you, um, what do you mean dispatch? I don't, I don't get that. So as it's come, I, I see the value. I see the importance of a dispatcher. It really does make sense. Now, if, if you're not going to go build a lane and you're not going to try to build a customer client base of car dealers and auctions, why do I always go car dealers and auctions, Jay? It's because there were about 40 million used cars sold last year and the year before and the year before. So <clears throat> I'm a used car guy and I really like buy here, pay here stuff. But regardless, car dealers, used car dealers have a lot of cars and they sell a lot of cars and they buy cars from auctions. So <clears throat> for me and what I've done it makes a lot of sense. And it, I'm the kind of guy I can just walk up to anybody and start talking to them and, and figure something out. Well, if, if you're not that kind of a person, can you be successful in this business? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's helpful. You know, if you, if you own your own business, well, what about a driver? Do I, if I'm a driver, do I need those skills? Yeah, absolutely. You do. This, this is really a well, sales business. <laughs> I mean, you really just hit upon it. That's it, is that if you're not a salesperson, find somebody that will do sales for your business. Because somebody's going to need to do sales. Yeah. And, yeah. and you mentioned on the gate pass thing, we all, that's what's so interesting about, you know, this journey and experience that we all share in some way is that it's easy to get set off by something. Yeah. And but we have to we have to try not to get set off. Errors will occur. And we yeah. have to try to. Well, know, and, and I think that's a good good insight to. OK, so why why do you get set off so easily? You know what I'm saying? Is it because you don't have any money and because you're behind? Is it because the price of your insurance is ridiculous and fuel just went up to four dollars a gallon and the rates are low? You know, that could be it, you know, and then, of course, uh, you mentioned rates. Yes, and you go, pressure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. yes pressure. <laughs> right. So and, and Chris is in the uh, live chat. He's like, yeah, man, he knows what he knows what that's all about. And actually, here's what we're going to do. Ty is we're going to bring in our friend Julie. Julie's going to join us. And I think we just heard the doorbell. Oh, here she comes. She's walking in the room. Um, ladies and gentlemen, from Nationwide Auto Transport, Ju Ty, you kn you've known Julie for years, right? Yeah, actually Please I have. introduce her. You know yeah. her. Julie and Mark, uh, <clears throat> great couple. They're great friends um, up in Nebraska. They are a carrier broker, and they do an incredible business. They've been around... I I would longer than I have. I think they've been around maybe 25 years. I could be wrong, but uh, I'm really excited to have Julie on for a couple of reasons. One, Julie is a big advocate for women in trucking, and I'm, she'll touch on that, I'm sure. But uh, it's always good and refreshing, I think, to have her perspective. You know, she, obviously, she, she's not like me. I'm I, I'm wacko and fly all over the place, but. Very but organized, of, very detailed. Think of the, the, the number of loads and carriers that she comes in contact with. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not just her personal experience. I don't want to cut you off. But I see these emails like every day of all the loads. She's doing a lot of business, man. Yeah, she's a mover. And um, <clears throat> she has incredible insight. And that's why I'm excited that she took the time to be with us tonight. It's it's really, it's really good. And... Um, I don't know where she's at. She's giving us a black screen. I am here. Oh, she's there. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, oh there, there you are. Okay, here cool. I am. Hello. Awesome. Sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, cool. Thanks, Julie. Hi. So, well, thanks for that great intro. I'm glad to be here tonight. Hope I can add a little little fun to the evening. 
We know you can. And that's why, seriously, Julie, we're so happy that you're here with us. Thank you for taking the time. You bet. Because you bet. Uh, on the round table, we are talking about, as Ty said, characteristics of a car hauler. Uh, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. Ty, what's a great way to transition and, and, and get Julie talking? I want to get Julie talking. What do we say to her? Well, Julie, okay, so Julie's been doing this a long time. Julie, Julie, you're a broker, right? Broker and carrier, yes. Broker and carrier, got that. And so what we're doing tonight is we're going to have a lot of people that are kind of new into the business. They, they're okay. either wanting to get in or they've been in for a little while. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I always try to encourage carriers is to, <clears throat> especially when you're dealing with a dealer directly or a broker, right? Mm -hmm. Julie, what are some of the things that are just like paramount important? For you as a broker, when you when you you get a carrier, he calls. Hey, I see a load. I would, I'd like to get that. Go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the number one thing, and it doesn't matter if you're a carrier, broker, you know, single car operation, big car operation, been around forever, or you're brand new. The number one thing you got to have is integrity. Okay. You got to live up to what you commit to, and you you've got to follow through. Um, I would say my number one hot button is. You know, somebody gets in the business new, right? And and they they call up and they book loads and they're going to do them this way and they're going to do them that way. And before it's all over with, they call and cancel. And, you know, they found a better paying load here or they found a load with less drops over there. And that's fine. Everybody has to work with what what works for them. But you have to understand this business is all about relationships and it's all about following through taking the good with the bad and developing that relationship. It's really, really important. So my bottom line is the first thing you got to have is a good deal of integrity. You, you've got to believe what your word is. Right. You've got to follow yeah. through. Um, the second place I think that I see some new carriers come on where they maybe scrimp a little bit is their insurance. And insurance is hugely critical, especially when you're trying to get into hauling OEM freight or being a sub hauler for somebody that has a contract on OEM freight, you want to get in that door, um, understanding what those coverages are, what they mean, and, you know, maybe spending that little bit of extra money to have the right kind of coverage so you don't get caught, um, you know, with a damage claim that you don't have coverage for. Uh, so that's very important is understanding what kind of coverage you need. And the last thing I hit on that just drives me nuts is take the extra 10 minutes and do your inspections because the only person whose money you're saving is your own. You know, I get a lot of pushback on, well, we've got all these apps to do this. Carrier has an app, you have an app, we have an app, can't we just use our app? Well, yes and no. Um, signatures are critical, but really stopping to spend that 10 minutes to do the inspection instead of just loading that vehicle. And then later, you know, you get the phone call, well, I didn't do that, it must have already been on there. Well give me something to fight with then you know give me some way to say hey my carrier did a great job they did their inspection here's where they've documented the damage before they ever left the yard the auction the dealership whatever the case may be um don't be in such a rush you know you're going to beat the clock you're going to kill your paycheck so let's go back to okay oem so everybody knows oem is new car yes so Sorry. You, you as a broker, you have new cars, mm -hmm. right? A new car contract. Right. So if I'm a new carrier and I, and I see you've got loads, which, which by the way, how do I, how do I find out you nation? Where do I get your loads? Well, a couple of places you can find them on central dispatch, but you can also call and just get on our email blast that goes out three times a day and it will show any available loads that we have for carriers. Um, simple process, just email us at dispatch at inwat.com. We'll put you on the list. Um, you don't have to take anything, but at least you'll see what's out there. So as a new carrier, I can I can send an email to inwat, dispatch at inwat.com, is that right? Correct. Mm -hmm. You can send an email to dispatch at inwat.com, which stands for North, uh, Nationwide, Nationwide <laughs> Auto Transport. Transport. Got it. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I have access to look at your loads. Right. Okay. Right. And those are all OEM, which OEM is new. They're not all OEM, but the majority of them right now are, yes. Okay. Yeah. So you, you put some of you, because you're an auction dealer. Is that mm -hmm. true? We do some of that too, yeah. Yeah. And you've done that for a long time as well. 
since 1999. <laughs> Not that I'm aging myself, but <laughs> since 1999, yes, it's been awesome. hauling the freight. So it's awesome. Well, and you, by the way, uh, you guys have a beautiful equipment. I've I've seen your trucks and trailers for years, and they, they keep your your equipment's beautiful and it's well maintained. Um, <clears throat> so if I'm a new carrier, I'm watching the show. I send an email, I get the load, I, I can look at your loads now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I see one that might fit into my lane, my route, whatever it is I'm doing. Right. Okay, so I'm going to call, email, text, I'm going to get a hold of somebody, dispatch, right. mm -hmm. and I'm going to say I'm interested in this. So what are you going to say next? Okay, the process next is we're going to establish whether or not you are already set up to do business with us. It's a simple couple of keystrokes to see if we have all of the carrier credentials, the necessary insurance coverage, um, carrier data sheet showing payment terms, those kinds of things. If they're not already established, we send them a simple document. It's new carrier setup. It's got all the documents that we need to get them set up where they can haul freight for us. Probably would take 10 minutes to fill it out. The longest thing that it takes is getting the insurance cert back from the insurance company. Um, we've got to have that in hand before we can dispatch. Um, but once we get all that, we get you set up in the system, we'll dispatch you a load, you'll get it through email, and you're good to go. Okay. Then you got to perform. Yeah, perform. Now, before I perform, when you say insurance, mm -hmm. what kind of insurance are we talking about here? Depends on the freight you want to haul. If you are looking at used car loads, we have to be a certificate holder. If you are hauling new car freight under our umbrella, we have to be additional insured with respects to auto liability and cargo. And that's where it might take a little more time because then your insurance company typically will want to review the broker contract to make sure that they afford the coverages that are requested in there. So, mm -hmm. and that's what I say, take the extra few minutes and get the right coverage. Right, and this would tie into one of the characteristics of a car hauler. For the guy that's really impatient, that sees something and wants it now, Mm -hmm. Oh, I got to fill out another form. Oh, I got to. Oh, I got to. Well, there's a reason, right? Right. right. Uh, why, why is that? Why do I need to slow down and stop getting ants in my pants? Well, because you're going to end up trying to jump the gun and you're going to end up hauling a load that you might not have coverage for, or you're going to get into a yard and you don't know any of the rules or regulations about that yard because you haven't been given that information yet. Um, and you could step on some toes inadvertently. So you really have to understand um, what's required when you go into some of these yards and rails. It's not the same as going to an auction. And, and you know that too, Ty, the auctions have plenty of rules of their own. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> you laugh, but you know it's there. <laughs> uh, there's, there's been a lot of guys have been kicked out of the auctions because they get in the car and they think, oh, I haven't driven one of these. <laughs> Let's see how fast it'll go. <laughs> uh, I'm not pointing fingers or anything, yeah. Ty, but, um, but yeah, I, I think there's just some understanding. So they need to slow down, understand the process at the outset. So they're not setting themselves up for failure. Um, you know, if it's something that they see some loads and you know, well, it doesn't really fit my wheelhouse today, but maybe, you know, in a month or two, I'd like to do that. Let's get processing and get everything set up now. So the day you do have ants in your pants, we're, we're ready to go. Yeah. Right? Well, and that, and that's a good point, Julie, because really, you know, I know, I know myself and I, you know, you talk about work integrity. Um, it comes back to work ethics as well. You know, there's, there's the guys that think car hauling is going to be fun that figure out it's a lot of physical, work and it's a lot of hours on the road but you've got to you've got to leave the house monday with the idea that i'm going to go out and i'm going to work solid for five days and then i'll be home for the weekend or you know some of the guys like to be out two weeks and then home um some of my guys want to be home every night that's fine too we have local freight you see the board uh, so there's you know we can we can match the loads to the desired routes um we get some guys that want to run the road and then after they run the road, they're not making enough money. They want locals. Um, they run locals for a week and they're physically beat. Then they want to go back on the road. So, you know, it's a mixed bag. You have to understand what's involved. You know, if you're going to load and unload and go 20 miles and you do five of those loads in a day, it's going to kill you, you know, so you can't do that consistently. Yeah. That's so good. just understand what's involved when you want to be home every night. That's the kind of work you're going to get. Good. Well, again, 
We're so excited to have you because we've also got uh, several female ladies that are going to be in the, the round table tonight. So awesome. I know Lionel, Jay is Lionel in the. So let's do this. Now what I'll do is um, let me go ahead and send it out to um, to Lionel. And then so Lionel and Mark, I'm going to send it out to both of you right now. Um, first, we're going to bring in Lionel to talk about insurance. Mark, go ahead and wait in the uh in the waiting room and let me know if you don't get your invites and so we'll do that also there's been some great stuff in the live chat i just want to thank everybody for for posting in the live chat saying hello making a comment great comment about is there information for brokers here tonight and i'm gonna go with yes and yeah we'll definitely get into that what what we're going to have to do, Jay? Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, um, I'm going to cut it short with Lionel. And I'm going to cut it short with Mark, and we have got a couple of people that are going to be in the round table that aren't feeling too hot. But I really want to hear what they've got to say, and then I'm going to let them go if they need to, if that makes any sense at all. Sure does, um, because essentially, I mean, for Lionel, well, and that's the it, Joe Bercari was in the live chat again, seconding what you said about insurance. Um, and I want to thank both of you for that, that segment right there. Great stuff. That's exactly what this is all about. This is amazing content and it's, it's, it's so great to see it unfolding on the channel and I can just step aside and let you all run with it. Cause I, that's one of the things that I, I've get to experience as I've gone through the ranks is being at the auction and seeing folks, you know, really take over with the conversation that I know some people in the audience are really looking for. So thank you guys so much for doing that. We've got, okay, so Mark's in the waiting room. I'm going to leave Mark there. Lionel should be here in a second. While we're waiting for Lionel, is there anything else you guys wanted to, oh, here yeah, well, I, since some broker came up, we yeah. will talk about it some more, but Julie, let's, let's talk a little bit about why, how did you become a broker and why? Well, it was born of necessity, like everything in this business. You start out as a carrier, right? And you're hauling freight, hauling freight. And then the auction springs out this new smart auction. Yes. You know, so now the dealers are yeah. buying vehicles across the country. And, um, it's a single here and a single there. Well, I can't send a truck after a single. So there you go. So now you need broker authority so you can legally put that load out there and dispatch it to another carrier. Which, okay, so that, so that, okay, she's, this is beautiful because Julie and I haven't talked uh, for probably a month or so, maybe just oh. for five seconds on the phone, mm -hmm. hey, Jay's going to send you an email. I think that was it. So Julie and I haven't talked for a while and this, what she just said is really important, guys. <clears throat> she, I don't, did you use the word organic? No. Okay. Natural. <laughs> out of necessity. Out of necessity. Out of necessity. So that I call that organic, meaning that you you had to become out of necessity a broker because of your relationships with your dealers, right? Mm -hmm. So again, it, it validates, which I like being validated, it makes me feel good. <laughs> but the importance of having the relationship with the customer. Right. Hey, yeah. look at There's that. There's Lionel. I see some people. All right. All right. I, I just want to say this is that it, the natural progression is as you build your customer base, you're going to also become part broker. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cause they're not going to always buy vehicles in your wheelhouse. So, and you've got to be the full service transportation provider so that um, you keep the rest of the business in house. So our goal has always been to serve whatever the client needs, even if it, becomes difficult. I mean, there, there are some loads I've lost money on and that's okay too, because in the long run, I'm still going to make money. Well, and I, I don't, this is a great point. And I want everybody that's watching and especially round table guys that are getting ready to come on and ladies, um, <clears throat> Julie touched on this just a little bit when she was talking about integrity in the beginning. And, and one of the things that really frosts people that are brokers, especially is, yeah, I'm going to, I'll take that load. And then a couple hours later, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Right. Well, why? Well, I'm not going to tell you, but the real the real answer is is I found something that I can make more money now. Mm -hmm. 
not all the time, but pretty much. <laughs> Just being honest. Right. Uh, the the thing that you'll notice, and Julie said this, and it's true, you if you're in this for the long game, I'm a long gamer, right? I, I'm in it for the long game. I understand if I take care of Julie today, Julie will take care of me tomorrow. And I bet Julie's got story after story, I know I do, of I took it on this one, but I made it up on this one. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that and that's that's to me for the, the new carrier <clears throat> to understand that is either it has to be like ingrained in you maybe already. It's or integral to the to business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So okay. Julie, I want to introduce you to uh Lionel. Lionel, who do you have with you? Linda. Well, Linda. I have have the brains of my operation on with us this evening. Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right on. Awesome. Thank you. All the stuff that I, I, I'm saying, and you, you think I'm making all these great answers and stuff, this is where they're coming from. Today. <laughs> Good. So, Lionel, Lionel, where are you located? We're in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And what do you do again? Um, we're an insurance brokerage right now. Okay. And we spec- and auto haulers and transportation. Yeah, right. And that, see, guys, I know that. I just like to ask questions and pretend I don't know. But Lionel is a huge core member of Auto Transport Intel. <clears throat> I get calls all the time, and insurance generally yes. comes up and call Lionel. Lionel knows. And the thing that I really like about Lionel is Lionel has what do you have, Lionel? You've got some experience in something. Uh, unfortunately, I, I may, I'm, I'm a guy who made a lot of mistakes in the auto transport industry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, then this is your round wife, table. Perfect. Is, he was, he was there too at every, every inch and every 15 degree night, we we're out there loading cars. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. <clears throat> good. Okay. Well, I'm going to cut us short, Lionel. I know you, you've always got good insight. Not a problem. Uh, where's Mark? Is Mark here? Okay, so yeah, so Lionel, you're in for the long haul tonight, I think, right? Yes. Lionel's like, what? Um, yeah, so Mark, <laughs> here comes Mark, and um, and then we're just going to, and then, yeah, what, at yeah. the end, somewhere, somewhere you're going to let me know that I'm just going to open the floodgates <laughs> and the super spreader is going to begin, and there's no masks tonight, so. Right, so if you, if you guys are paying attention at all, round table or live chat, we've got a broker and a carrier. <clears throat> insurance and now we've got a technology guy right so i've never been a fan of insurance but i trust my agent right i for years trust him i will occasionally uh check on him but as a, as a whole your insurance agent is a, is a good person that genuinely cares about you uh julie the broker carrier Lionel, now we've got Mark Mark Technology. Mark, <clears throat> who are you with? Superflow Systems. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, Perfect. Look good. Did you get a fresh haircut? <laughs> I, I did. Uh, so I was a little confused because I stopped that and, um, you know, that new setup I have. So speaking of technology, I'm sorry. I, I thought I had a malfunction, but no malfunction. No, you, I'm you, good to go. You are. It's where it, it. You look good. You sound okay. good. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. So, yes. so my, my son uh, Matthew would go when I get my hair cut. He smacks me on the back of the head and goes, "I like your cut, G." <laughs> I don't. I don't know why. They, I don't know why they do that. <laughs> That's funny. Know. Okay, so Mark, you're with Superflow Systems? Superflow Systems and Technologies. So if I'm a new carrier, what, what do I need? Why, why are you here? Uh, if you're a new carrier, my first suggestion is call Ty at the number that Kimberly posts on the uh, live chat. That's my <laughs> first suggestion. So, and maybe you should do that before you become a new carrier. But if you're already a new carrier and you've talked to Ty, we have some technology for you. And that could be dispatch center. Dispatch center is a load board that is, um, if you haven't seen it lately, it's full of new and, as I like to say, badass technology. Badass. Nice. So nice. So Lionel, that- Lionel had um, mentioned um, a couple of things, and one of the things I wanted to get from him was um, we had a we had a chart last week that we had ready for 
the rates and um, the uh, price of fuel in correlation with the rates. And Brian wanted to get that from Lionel if I could, but I never got a hold of Lionel yet. But to also on that same chart, graph the insurance and show that the rate and, and the auto transporter to the carrier and the fuel and then the insurance to correspond with that. Mm -hmm. So sorry I interrupted you. No, no. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say when I had a chance to see Lionel before Lionel jumped off or. Well, so we hear uh, as carriers, we hear TMS. Jay, can you go ahead and bring everybody in? Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and bring everybody in. Yeah. And while while that's I'm happening, talking tomorrow. Ty, yes, TMS, because we hear it. Yeah. So if I'm a new carrier, Julie's a broker. I got a, Julie has a load I want. I got my insurance through Lionel, so I'm ready to go. We got that taken care of. Yep. I want this load from Julie. Julie, what kind of paperwork do you need? Or do you even do paper anymore? We don't do paper. No paper. So what, what am I supposed to do as a new carrier? I want to get a load from you. And how do I build? What do you what happens next? Well, um, we have a system that we can set you up on our internal app as a driver and all of your paperwork, if you want to call it that. But all of your uh, inspections and proof of deliveries are all automated. So, so they're all generated from your device back to my back office system. Okay, so if I'm new and I have no idea what you're talking about, I'm going to go talk to Mark and I'm going to ask yes. Mark for what they call a TMS, which is, what does that stand for, Mark? Transport Management System. Transport Management? the dashboard, the dashboard of, of, of what you have. So you as a carrier have dispatch center and you and that's have- all on my phone. It's right? all available on your phone, yes. Okay, the mobile so app, I just want to say the mobile app is on your phone the for mobile the driver. Is is different. The mobile app is different than the TMS. The right. TMS. So Julie assigns my trucking company an order. And now it I put it on my TMS and now I'm going to manage it to what driver I want to send it to. And I will send it to his mobile app. So, yeah. so technology today, if I just heard this right, <clears throat> if I'm a new carrier and I I'm old school and I just use send you a paper. Hey, Julie, here's the vans and here's the cars and here's where I picked them up and here's where I dropped them off. And I got a signature and I find a fax machine and I fax it to you. Now pay me. That, that, that's not how it goes anymore. No, nope, it doesn't work that way anymore. Everything's driven by GPS coordinates and date and time stamps and milestones, et cetera. <laughs> okay. So real time data. So as a carrier, I, that's probably something I'm going to have to look into along with getting my authority, finding insurance, right? Which equipment I'm going to drive? What TMS am I going to need to manage my cars? Is that right? Did I say that's right? That's correct. Okay. So um, people are still pouring in. So we're just going to keep this coming until maybe everybody gets in here. And Julie, I know you may slip out early or may not. I don't know, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So as everybody's following the, the conversation here, we've got uh, Julie's the carrier broker, Lionel's insurance, Mark's technology. These are all things that you will encounter if you decide you want to own your own car hauling company, right? So clear differentiation here of, we are talking to people that want their own their own transport company or, um, already own their own transport company, right? So we're not talking to, I want to hire a driver right now. We're talking to people that want to get into this business and think they can make something of themselves and maybe generate money to pay the bills, right? Okay. So with that said, <clears throat> um, Lionel, real quick, what are you seeing in the insurance world right now? What's, what's some of the things going on with you? Well, right now, um, obviously, within the insurance industry itself, the market's tightening and that's not really good news. It's just that uh, means it's getting harder and harder to substantiate yourself in the industry. Um, I will tell you, uh, everybody who's tuned in this evening or anybody tunes in in the future, you are in the right place at the right time because it's all about your network and it's all about how you're set up. Uh, and it's all about how you substantiate yourself and move forward in the industry itself. Because car 
of everything that Ty and Jay discussing here this evening and, and, uh, and all the guests that are here. Uh, your profit foundation based on your character in this industry from your credit, how you pick your loads up, how you uh, perform, and if you stay on track to do that and there with safety, safety falls right in line here uh every, we're the having a little bit of dropout but keep going i'm just we're hearing you but we're having a little bit that, of dropout yeah. just keep going i'll put it that way <laughs> and yeah. i want to say this too is that <laughs> hey uh, we know that it takes a while to get out get around to everybody so thank you for joining thank you for your patience and do me a favor uh go ahead and wave <laughs> say hello because this is we're going to take our this is our family photo right oh. <laughs> thank you guys so much for taking the time to join us tonight really hey. do appreciate it it means a lot there's everybody oh, i'm gonna be right back i gotta turn the fan on one <laughs> first sign of old age mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're back okay uh so who do we got here Everybody, everybody here? Good. Okay. There was a couple that, here we go. I'm going to do a little skipping tonight because Catherine, I want Catherine to talk real quick. Catherine's not feeling too good and we're going to probably cut her loose. Is that okay, everybody? <coughs> Catherine, where are you at? Oh, Hi, and everyone. also, hey, do this. Do me a favor. One more favor. If you're not talking, do me a favor. Hit mute. Otherwise, it keeps showing your camera. You know, it hears like some cricket in the background. It's like, yeah, show me the cricket. So mute, I'm going to do the same and take her away. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, Catherine, where are you at again? In Florida. You're in Florida. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I've talked to you a couple times, I think, right? Yes, on a regular basis. Yes, <laughs> all good things. So you're in Florida. You last time I think we talked, you were having some driver trying to find a driver, right? Yes, and I'm learning that that is going to be an ongoing thing. So, I'm constantly trying to keep my bench of drivers open and available. So always hiring, always have ads on Indeed and Facebook and everywhere else, looking for high quality drivers. Um, Julie, it's a pleasure and an honor to see someone like you here on this forum. I mean, sharing what you've shared thus far has just totally inspired me. So thank you. I just wanted to say that. And Jackie, I've not met you before, but nice to see you all here. Not No disrespect to the men on the team here, because I ride or die for the guys as well. But, you know, in this industry, seeing some women here is refreshing to see, especially someone of your caliber, Julie. I, I, I'm beyond stoked. You're like my new woman crush in business right now. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, there's, um, we're missing Christina. And also, I wanted to, see, Luann's here. So Jackie, Jackie's here, Luann. Uh, Catherine and then Christina is somewhere floating around here. And then we've got it. Who's this over here with the little girl? Is that John Cochran, maybe? Okay. All right. So yeah, let's get back yeah. down to business here. Um, now's your chance, Catherine. You got Julie. So I'm going to let you guys hammer it out. Go for it. I don't know that there's enough time, but. <laughs> <laughs> We need a private room, I think. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Let's have a lunch date. <laughs> sure. Um, no, I mean, drivers, I, from, you know, I, it's, it's nice that I began this, this journey and Auto Intel has been part of it from day one. Um, I became a part of this group to learn um, exactly what it is um, from all perspectives, from the driver side, from the um, insurance side, from the dealership side, from the auction side. I wanted to know everything that had anything to do with transporting an automobile from A to Z. And Auto Intel has definitely been um, 
the source of, you know, getting all of this information and then definitely reaching out to Ty, who has been the best mentor that I've had in this journey so far. Everything that Ty has said, the blueprint, if you follow the blueprint that Ty Thompson gives you and the direction that he gives you, you got to be successful. I mean, that it's it. His introduction here with regards to this is hard work. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, but if you put in the work and you do have that integrity and you do build those relationships and you constantly work on servicing people and just putting that at the forefront as opposed to just going in it for the sake of making money or you know trying to establish certain things, then no, that's not the reason to get into this industry. And um, I think one important thing you brought up, and I, I can't stress it enough, is is from the, um, I guess, upper management. I think it's really, really important that upper management understands what the drivers go through in a typical day. Their job is hard. It really, really is hard. And so for us to, you know, try to do as much as we can do back office to make sure the VINs are verified, the bay locations are sorted out, gate passes are there if they need them, um, you know, keys are accounted for, trying to simplify their life because having to learn all the different apps or maybe getting a TMS that then will interface all the apps, that will help. But all the different locations and all the different rules and regulations and they're out there when it's 110 and they're out there when it's 20 below, I don't think people give the drivers enough credit for how tough this job really is. And so yeah. when we're back in our office and it's a nice cool 72 degrees, we need to stop and think about why they might be a little crabby and why they might be having a bad day. And it's it's really tough. It really is. Yeah. I definitely good. echo that. I've been on, I've gone out with my guys mm -hmm. to see what it's like to be behind, you know, to be in their shoes and to get things from their perspective. And I've learned a lot from it. So mm -hmm. for example, um making so we've made some adjustments making sure the bols are filled out prior to and mm -hmm. all they have to do is circle out you know and take photos of the inspection right. um having those gate passes readily available printed out um even having the google maps route for the for the for the for the day or for whatever we're doing mm -hmm. all of these things are just and letting them know where the best you know fill up for gas is Right. To the point of even taking a satellite view of certain locations that might have a little bit of a tight squeeze to get your equipment in and out mm -hmm. of so right. that they know all of those things. And those are things that they have voiced. They're forever grateful for it because it's just one less thing that they have to worry about. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge, <laughs> especially trying to get a semi into some of these dealerships. It's like they kind of forgot how they get their free. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm lost. But so you have to take that Google Earth view and kind of put the little arrows on and don't park here. And and we've done the yeah. same thing. And we had a book of all of our locations that we handed out in orientation. And it's helpful. But um, there's a lot of things that they have to consider in a day. And two, yeah. just for the record, sorry to interrupt you too, but uh, eventually, Catherine, you will want to get in touch with Julie. Julie's uh, very organized and very detailed, and she just said something. That's why I interrupted look, you. Look because... here. I have Julie's contact information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Julie does have a manual, and Julie does make sure that new hires understand that manual, and there's a reason for that, right, Julie? Absolutely. Yeah. you got to set I them mean... up for success. You know, you don't want them yeah. to, you know, there, there's a level of expectation and, and I don't want to hire, and this is a term my husband coined years ago, but I don't want to hire retreads, the guys with the bad habits that just keep circling from carrier to carrier. You know, I want, I want that professional grade driver that yeah. cares about what he's doing and cares about, again, integrity, right, of what he's doing. He's got somebody else's equipment. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's well, funny that you mentioned that because Lincoln is a partner of mine and he, he, you know, during this week when as we continue to learn that it's mm -hmm. a revolving door of drivers, we were thinking, man, it would be great if, if we could come up with an app or if it even existed where we can find people that rate these drivers, kind of like a Craigslist, <laughs> but for the auto industry. <laughs> well, they certainly so you rate know us, kind but... of what you're getting into here. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, and sometimes you're just, you know, in my case, I know I've had drivers that I've just 
nearly cried when they left, but it just wasn't the right fit. The, you know, the wife wanted them home more often, or they just had a new baby, or those things happen. And, and that's nothing against the driver. They have a life to live. That's why they have a job to start with. Yeah. So we understand that. But we also know that, you know, just like probably some brokers, there's some bad apples out there that kind of, you know, it's like destructive carnage and then they move on to the next one <laughs> and those are the ones you hope that you know the industry as a whole will start weeding those guys out you know with with the new improved hours of service and things like that so anyway yeah well, no i was impressed to hear you know how you started and one of the things you mentioned that you started to do out of necessity Mm -hmm. So you do brokering, you do, you know, you have your auction stuff, you do like a little bit of everything and, and hearing you say that this all came out of necessity, it, it struck a chord with me because doing this, I mean, we started in October of last year mm -hmm. and it was like Sai said, go to the auctions, go to the dealers, go to the dealers, go to the auctions, go to the auctions. And so... Yep. Networking yeah, even with people in the gas station. If I see a car, a carrier <laughs> in the gas station, hey, how are you doing? You know, <laughs> so um, mm. that has created such a momentum whereby my phone rings more than I can even take care of the business for them. And mm -hmm. it's and it's forced me to now establish relationships with all entities, dealerships, carriers. Um, to the point where I'm even considering doing brokering because mm -hmm. there's enough out there for everyone to eat. And, and, and as long as we're all servicing and doing what we need to do and carrying ourselves with that integrity, Absolutely, there's so yeah. much opportunity out there for everyone to work together. Right. Yeah. Okay. Pause. I've got it. Harrison's over here. I'm, I'm told Harris, Harrison's usually Harrison's in Harrison has a cool story. I, I'm, wanted to tell because he's probably going to have to leave in a minute I, I saw his phone ring so harrison where are you at i'm over here, over you guys here. Are what i'm on the screen i, I don't know i mean where are you located i see you <laughs> oh. uh, yeah we are yeah phoenix arizona i'm sorry i was confused I thought you couldn't. Phoenix. okay yeah. so, Stop, so. I wanted Harrison here tonight for a special reason because there's a lot of things going on in the industry that we haven't even talked about that not only really solidify or validate that this business is a little difficult, but Harrison, tell us just tell us your story real quick. This is this is a good story. I like it. Uh, so I've been a tow truck operator since I was um, a kid, and then um, pretty much I got into auto hauling because I came on here. I saw the show here that I'm on now, and I learned about it. I called up and I sat down and I wrote all of the things he said and to do this and to to, to talk to the uh, the dealers, the auctions. I did all of that and ultimately I opened up um, um, a hauling business. And um, so like everything I heard you say at the beginning just brought back these nightmares when it was, you know, the DOT, the auctions, the gate pass, the photos for the damage that Julie said. I had a four thousand dollar claim. No, it wasn't a claim. I paid it out, and this was thirty days in. I think you know, and uh, it was just painful. Julie, oh my god! And then I bought. So I was doing three car at first, and I had a Chevy thirty five hundred, which I have it. I love it now. But it just the, the, those trucks aren't kind of built to do that. So then I went out and I bought a brand new 5500, a Dodge. It didn't install the fifth wheel on it correctly. Uh, I lost a trailer in two cars two days after I picked it up. I was going about three miles an hour out. Yeah. And you're still and then, doing this. <laughs> no, it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm towing now. I'm doing much better now. But I mean, the shit show just continued. I I had a motor blow on that brand new truck uh, after um, I got it back from the dealership and I bought a brand new trailer. I remember that phone call 
to die. I was on the side of the road. I was just like, I'm, I can't believe this, you know? So then I bought an international 18 wheeler. The insurance didn't, the insurance is that you said the, uh, I made sure I got the coverage I needed and they quoted me for, it was off by like $2,000. So I, I was quoted, uh, I think like $2,500 a month and it was actually about $3,900 a month. So, um, you know, these things just, they kept adding, adding up. And, uh, eventually, um, I pulled the plug on it and, um, I sold everything. I got into towing in Phoenix here. I know a lot of people I worked in, um, the clubs here. I was a bouncer. So I, from all of that, I met a ton of people and I was able to transition into towing and uh it's 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 been awesome it's been easier for me the headaches aren't all there i don't have uh the expenses as far as the insurance is i'm like half the price uh the dot isn't all over me they actually they kind of like me now when i show up for um, um a big accident and i clean up you know but I understand everything that you said about the whole, like the headaches, whole, yeah, I don't miss yeah. it. But. So, they, so I wanted Harrison, I was really excited Harrison took the time to be here. Harrison's always on a busy schedule. He's got ants in his pants all the time and he's always got to go do something. And Harrison and I have spent a lot of time on the phone. And the reason I want Harrison here is because this, this should tell you, Harrison, is car hauling easy? No. No, it's very, very hard. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. You lost a little bit of money, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, the tax guy says it was $170,000, but it was about $30,000 in cash. I probably lost, yeah. Okay, so I'm laughing at Harrison, okay? Everybody, everybody see me laughing at Harrison, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not funny, I promise you. It's oh. not funny. At this point, you just laugh, okay? Yeah, but, <laughs> exactly. At this point, you just laugh. I remember Harrison called me, what do I do now? I'm like, man, I don't know. So I don't even know all the answers, okay? But the point is, is I, I'm really excited to be here because he, uh, through all that, okay, he calls me later after he's got rid of everything. He's paying off all the bail, bills from the transport company. He's got his rollback. He's building the business there. Harrison, who are some of your customers now? Uh, well, dealerships that I worked with in transport, they, I mean, everybody knows that their cars, they need them 20 minutes ago, right? So now I'm able to capitalize on it and say, I'm not going to Mannheim with the gate pass, with the asshole, the, the people over there that don't know like where the car is, who don't care where the car is. I'm going to charge you the mileage and the hook fee and a dollar per minute for how long I'm there. So I've got the existing clients I had and I've met a bunch more too. Through them. Well, I'm thinking with your bouncer background and your on the hook coverage, maybe you should get into repossessions. <laughs> I thought about that. And um it's awesome. So I met a dude here at the gym I know that owned a big repo business and then a contact of ties also i thought to her i forgot the lady's Brianna, name super Brianna cox i talked to her and the two people i know the dude here and her they knew um um of each other i don't think they're fans of each other but <clears throat> they know of each other um and yeah i mean that field it would be good in the future but um i did a few um a few things on it and the soft expensive and i don't think i'm quite at a point to do that yet plus it's like a completely different thing from towing itself yeah you know? wait but, till you see the insurance quotes on it <laughs> so anyway harrison um i know you're a busy guy i know if you got a jet you will but i'm really happy thankful i really appreciate you coming on here and no. sharing your story uh, like, because, you know, you don't me. Huh? No, of 
Of course, Ty. You've done so much to help me out. The least I could do. You give me so much time. Well, thank you. I really do appreciate it. So I'm going to keep rolling here. Catherine, you're good. Harrison, good. <clears throat> now we've got John and Luann. Now, John and Luann, uh, they've got some interesting things to update us about. John, Luann, what's going on? Where are you guys at? Hi, Chris. How are you? Hi, guys. How are you? We're good. <clears throat> Where are you guys located now? We're still in Jersey. Um, house fell through, and then today it just resold again. So it was back on the market for a day, and we we're back in the process of uh, it got sold again today. So we're still we're heading to Florida. We're still, we're still heading to Florida. Going to Florida, okay. And what? Who do you know in Florida? Uh, my mom's there. My sister's there. A lot of his friends are there, so they're waiting for us. The kids don't want us to leave Jersey, but I think we need a little sunshine after the winter up here. Yeah. And you guys have your own what? We have towing and transport. We um, we do mostly, our business has mostly gone into gentlemen's work of moving them through the dealerships. We do a lot through the auction houses. And with your guidance, we do a lot of buy here, pay here. So, yeah, it's kept us really, really busy. The phone's been ringing. So thank you for that. Good. Now, what do you? What is your plan for this transition? You're going from Jersey to Florida, so you've got a kind of a client base. It sounds like, right? So, how's that? What's that going to look like? Okay, you ready? I, should I let my husband take this one over? Because you know he's charming, Charlie. I tell you that all the time. <laughs> There's beauty in the beast. He is the beauty. I am the beast. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't listen to words. Don't listen to it. <laughs> it's all true. So um, while we were in Florida, moving down, um, now you know we're in the car hauling, but we took a we took the enclosed with us. And as long as you're going down, will you take my couch? Of course we will. Will you take my cat? Of course we will. Will you take my Peloton? Of course we will. So while we're there, we get a uh, blown tire on the trailer, big enclosed. So we're looking around now. We go and get the tire changed. The next day we're getting ready to head back. Tire's flat again. Well, okay, let's take it back to where we got the tire from and see what's wrong. Wound up being that the rim was cracked. So now we had to find a place to get a tire and a rim. Now everything happens for a reason. So we find a place called Southern uh, Equipment, which was down in like Palm Beach, Florida. And as we're talking to the gentleman, we bought our tire, we bought our rim, they're fixing it. Where are you guys from? We're from New York, you know, kind of business that we're in. They had a, nice, a lot of nice equipment there. A lot from the outside, it looked like a junkyard. The inside was like a beautiful uh, Barrett Jackson warehouse. It was gorgeous inside. So as we're leaving, thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. The owner comes running out after my handsome husband and says, uh, excuse me, excuse me, are you guys from New York? Did I hear you're from New Jersey? So John's like, yeah, how are you? Give him his business card, puts out his hands. My name is John, this is what we do. Long story short, um, I got a couple of things to move. What do you got? 700 golf carts from New Jersey to Florida, 300 trailers from Virginia to Florida. Can you guys help us? Of course we can help you. So right place, bad accident, right place, right time. So he's already has a connection there that this gentleman, it's like, I cannot find people here that want to work. And we're like, we can't find people either. It's him and I have just gone back to basics. Catherine, we're with you. We've already lost two drivers, broken equipment. So we're back to, you know, the horse and pony show here. It just works right now. And um, he already has a massive connection in Florida in just like that. We need help. <laughs> Good. All right. So you guys are headed to Florida, getting the house gone, and you're making connections down in Florida and doing business. It's working out. Okay. Good. Good. Go ahead. Ask Ty some of, your, uh, some of the things that have got floating around in your head lately. I do want to put this out to anyone that comes up north. They just passed a bill up here for congestion pricing for tolls. New York, New Jersey is both going to participate in it. So anyone that comes out from out of state, the roadways that are most conge congestion are going to raise the tolls on them. Yeah. So even bridges that don't have tolls right now, they're going to start to implement them. So I don't know how they're going to uh, monitor this and increase our hauling, you know, the hauling prices, because we've noticed that the prices have stayed a bit level or dropped where everything else has increased. 
insurance has gone up, tolls have gone up, gas has gone up. I know we're a broken record, but um, yeah, we need to uh, need to get some help out here for us. <laughs> just like you said, having so much fun just trying to pay the bills. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, we'll come back. I'm going to go to, is that John Cochran over there? Oh, yeah, that's me. Hey, buddy, what are you doing? Um, enjoying the day off from driving the bus. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Where are you at again? You're East Coast, I think. DC. DC, that's right. Yeah. You still want to get into car hauling after how many round tables? This is my second second one. Wow. I've been car hauling for a while. I used to actually work for a repo company, and I would drive the F-350 dually with the Take-3 to the cars, to take the cars to the auction. Oh, that's right. Okay. So that I kind of got interested in it because I thought it would be kind of fun. And then uh, one of the guys went to actually went and got a eight-car car hauler with the Stinger, and he got into it. So I kind of wanted got interested in it. But I didn't know it was so easy. I thought it was hard. I thought getting a DOT was the hardest thing in the world, but I'm finding out it's not. So, kind of been able to do. Good, good. So you're uh, you're still in the in the, I guess research mode. Does that sound fair? Uh, yeah, um, I got to save a few more bucks. I've got some. Uh, I got, and, but I'm just trying to taking notes and, um, trying to figure out what I need to do. But really, now I'm really actually looking for a truck now. Th I uh, August first or September first as a backup sure. to get. Um, you mentioned something about saving up some money. I'm going to ask Julie. Julie, what what's the point in getting in this? If, what's some of your advice? If, if you're a new person, you want to get in. I always tell people you need to have some cash. What's your advice? Sonny is number one. Sonny has so many different... Got to have some cash reserves. You, you can't just go into the business and think the money is going to start rolling in, especially if you're getting into hauling new car freight because they, you know, 30 to 45 days is the turn on that money. Um, so I would say you've got to have a, a good six months worth of working capital in the bank before you get going. That's important. Yeah. I'm, I'm almost there. Um, yeah. yeah, I got, um, got a few more things to do. That's why I said August or September 1st is my target date. I think I, I, think I remember talking to you and I think that was one of the, parts of the conversation that kind of caught your attention, wasn't it? A little bit? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like what's the, what I need. Um, I, I have a very cheap life. I don't, I don't live extravagant. In fact, I don't think I own a new piece of furniture. I don't have cable. I don't, I'm very cheap. <laughs> right. Julie just yeah. said something that I think is interesting as well. Julie, um, say that again about 30 to 45 days. Well, the new car manufacturers, uh, when you're hauling their freight, their turn time, depending on whether it's contract freight or spot by freight, um, is predicated on a 30 or 45 day payment cycle. So if I'm getting paid in 30 to 45 days from when we turn in a signed bill of lading or proof of delivery, uh, it's 30 days from that time until I get the money. So if I am then paying the carriers in 15 days, you know, those kinds of things, um, we offer some COD payment terms for the guys that are just starting out. They want to get the money quicker, but money costs money, right? So um, to get those terms, there's a discounted fee on it. So you have to think about all those things when you're out there deciding what kind of freight you're going to haul. And, you know, when I'm talking about six months of operating capital, what are your insurance payments? Um, what are you going to do for all changes? You've got maintenance, you've got uh, work comp coverage, you've got all these, and maybe you don't have work comp coverage if you're, you know, just a single out there doing what you need to do. But in that case, you've got to have some kind of coverage on yourself, whether it's occupational accident coverage or some kind of group policy that you have independent of the business. There's just a lot of considerations, you know, the technology now with the automated e-logs that costs money you've got you know tolls when you're running those costs money all these things and so i sit down with spreadsheets and i do a p l by truck every month it's important that you know what your costs are and get right. down to that running cost so you can figure out what you need to put away right right so. that's good good information and she said something that i don't say which i like the way she said it better she said six months operating capital i always 
say six months, whatever it costs you to live. Right. right. That away. But I, I like Julie's take really better. So the question is, okay, well, I'm new. I don't know what my expenses are. Okay, well, let's sit down and let's take a look at what we do know. Then you do a performa and put it together. So, yeah, I, I've been doing that. Oh, good. Okay. Say, I agree. I'm obsessed. I'm very obsessed. Well. Okay, good. All right. Well, I'm going to go introduce Jackie. I have not met Jackie. Text a couple times. We haven't talked. Jackie, where are you? What are you doing? I'm right here. How are you? I'm in New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey. Okay. I and, am. I am. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, a little about me. I started um, working as a, a dispatcher about nine, ten years ago. And about four years ago, I said, you know, I want to start brokering. And I was getting a lot of business from just, you know, the the carriers um, telling me, hey, this guy wants his car. Can you help? I was like, well, I can't under your company. So I started my own brokerage and um i've been doing that for four years last year is when i started just solely doing it and it was you know 2020 of course um so yeah that's that's uh where i am oh well what what are some of your challenges right now so i guess right now and um you know listening to julie by the way integrity like you said that is like the one that and relationship, keeping those relationships are, are the things that are so important. Um, um, but I wanted to ask, uh, I guess, you know, you asked the group, asked Julie, what's the best way to drum up new business? You know, I've done every, should, should I focus on sales? Should I focus on marketing? When it comes to marketing, I've done SEO, the Google ads, the Yelp, you know what I mean? Like just, I guess, to get the, the I guess the, the private ones, right? Dealers, I've bought lists, call them, I guess. And now it's, it was last year, it was just hard to kind of hit the ground, go to the dealerships, you know, you have to make appointments up here, you know, in Jersey. So that's been challenging this year. And I guess, I don't know what, um, I guess my focus should be just to get that new business. Well, yeah, last year was definitely a challenge because to kind of get the brokerage started, it, it takes the relationships and it takes that constant, um, repetitive visits um it used to be at the auctions you know you might be there at the transportation booth every week for six months before this guy finally walks up and says hey i got one in Mannheim, pennsylvania can you bring it back for me and you take that one and you run with it and even if that particular one might cost you a little bit extra to get it going it's all about hitting the ground running with those kinds of service um you know under promise and over deliver on that kind of stuff. I would always leverage, you know, well, when, when's, when's it going to be here? And, you know, you know, seven to 10 days and I try to get it there in five, you know, always surprise them with that extra thing. Um, getting in front of the transportation people at the auctions is critical. Um, they can be your savior and they can break you. They're one of the two things are going to happen, but all of the auctions have a transportation um, coordinator. Making friends with that person is critical because they're going to be the ones that get this dealer that comes in every once in a while. And he's from, you know, 500 miles away, doesn't have a standard carrier. And they're going to come reach out to you and say, hey, you stopped in. I got your card. I've got this guy that just came in, bought a load of cars. What would you charge him? And that's how you start getting some of those relationships going. And then you keep servicing there, you know, a fruit basket here and there, those kinds of things to keep them happy and calling you is important. Um, this business is definitely relationship driven. Um, so staying in front of those people is critical. Okay. Uh, Julie brought up a good point. She said uh, being at a booth at an auction, is that how you said that, Julie? Right. Yeah, a lot of the auctions um, have a an area set aside for transporters. Um, now it's not free, you have to pay and you have to pay your dues to be there. Um, sometimes you have to go on a wait list to get that spot. Rates uh, anywhere from 450 a month to 675. I think the highest I paid was 750. And then you just have to have a person every week consistent at that auction, hand out candy, hand out business cards, do free donuts once in a while. The guys are gonna come for food. I mean, that just is how it happens. Um, but those are the things that get them walking up to talk to you. And then, you know, that's where you start the relationship. Where are you from? Do you have a transporter here? Do you come here often? 
and it just snowballs. That's how that happens. So, Jackie, Julie, you are a hundred percent. Jackie, I can testify. I show up at those auctions. I look for those dealers and I'm walking around with a little thermos full of, well, here in Florida, everybody drinks like espresso coffee, this Cuban coffee, <laughs> and they're all tired. So I walk around with a thermos of coffee and my little shot glasses and just right on. talk to everyone, talk to everyone. You have to be present. And once you make those connections, I always take selfies with them. Hey, you know, let me get your phone number. Here's a, let's take a selfie so you don't forget who I am. And now you're in their phone and then you follow up and they know who you are because you're constantly doing that. So, and you post them on your website and tag them in it or your Facebook page. Yes. Yeah. It's great ideas. Mm -hmm. Are you guys getting this? This is awesome. This Social is media is the way to go. Love it. There you go. Blow it up. Well, there's some pro tips, Jackie. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I hope that helps. Who do we got Thank over there? Guys. Is that Carlos? Hey, Ty. Hey, buddy. How are you? Hey, Jay. I'm all right. How about y'all? We love hey, Carlos. Hey, Carlos. Carlos is what we call the core. This dude does not miss a show, man. We love Carlos. How are no, you, buddy? You. Where are you at? I'm in Texas. Texas? Yes. That's not your home, is it? No. No. Where's your home? Uh, I live in North Carolina. North Carolina, right. Yes. Now, what What do you got? What are you doing? Uh, I came down here to pick up my new trailer today. Oh, that's right. What yeah. are you doing? Uh, Infinity 5 car. Woo! Everybody, high five. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, no, that is. That's big. That's awesome. Congratulations. That nice, dude. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Have, have you got to put anything on it yet? I got one on it now, and I got to pick the rest up tomorrow and head to Alabama. He's picking up his new trailer. Man, congratulations. Now, just out of curiosity, I haven't messed with the Infinity 5 car. Does it have the hydraulic ramps out the back, or is it? Yes. Hydraulic pull it. So it's a self-contained trailer? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, so self-contained. Tell us what self-contained is. Everything is in the trailer. The hydraulic pump, uh, the controls, the battery, everything is built into the trailer. Mm, right and so it saves your back doesn't it that versus, oh yeah what did you have before that i have a, a basically a kaufman three car yeah how what kind of ramps did you have back there oh i had to get rid of the steel ones i got aluminum ones <laughs> i can't mess with the steel you ones weighed what probably 80 pounds minimum 80 pounds yes yeah. about 80 pounds a piece yes so you get the loading on that that can wear your back out right yep and i'm 51 and i can't handle that no more Wow. Well, that's really big news, guys. And I mean that uh, getting a new trailer, especially one with a hydraulic ramp out the back is that's whoo. And that's got strap straps, right? It's a strap. Yes. Good. Over the wheel strap. Yes. And it got the hydraulic flipper up front and one in the middle. Hydraulic flipper out the front. So that's closer to the truck, right? Where your right. fifth wheel is. <clears throat> now right. this is a low profile, I'm assuming, right? Correct. Yes. You can load everything just about chest high, right? Uh, actually, a little bit lower than chest high. Lower. Good. <clears throat> it's so about it's waist safer. high. Yes. Let's work. And uh, you're excited, I, I would assume. Oh, yeah. I finally got the trail I wanted. So, man, that's awesome. Congratulations. So, well, thank you. Uh, how's it? How's business going for you? What are you seeing on the streets, on the rates, on the fuel? What do you, where are you, how are you feeling? Uh, actually, the fuel is actually starting to come down a little bit. So, that's that's a good thing. Um, the rates, they're still kind of high uh jenna jen is my dispatcher so she does a really good job of keeping me loaded with good rates so i don't have to worry about that right now good so you've got a uh your truck and trailer you've got a dispatcher which jenna works at uh, murphy auto murphy yes. auto which is sue right correct okay and you've been with them for a while haven't you uh i just started with them back in uh october of last year yeah well, that's good that's good and it's working for you Ah uh, yes, it is. Good. Okay. Any thing you're trying to figure out in your head? Any what are your goals, plans? What's what are you looking at? Um, uh, right now, um, trying to get used to this new trailer first, because it's, it's a little bit longer than my old one, and it's a little bit different. I got to be careful with the, the tail, learning the new trail tail swing on that one. Um, run this thing for about a year, then get a bigger truck. I, I'm gonna get my M2, so that's my next purchase. 
Yeah, good job. All right. Okay, now is this trailer? I forgot to ask. Is it a tandem axle trailer with yes. tools? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Awesome. That's fantastic. I'm excited. What we need to do is get a picture, and Jay needs to post it on one of the shows. So next chance you get, if you don't mind, I'd love to see it. Uh, not a problem. I had to take one today to send it to my parents because they wanted to see it also. Perfect. Um, yeah. Maybe we can share that Thursday on Dispatching Live. Okay, yeah, cool. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be really good. Okay. Um, well, Carlos, you're a huge part of the show, man. We talk about you all the time. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you so much, Carl. Well, I, I tell I tell everybody about the shows. A lot of them don't come to watch wow. it, but I say that's on you. You don't want to learn. That's on what? you. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. And you've say, got Julie's email now. We'll get you hooked up there, and Jen and everybody, Murphy will get you. So there's a good connection there. Um, Who's that? Uh, Julie. Julie has her load board. We can oh. maybe yes. get some loads off Julie too. That's right. Correct. Yes. Yes. That's right. We need to get hooked up. I think, Julie, you need some carriers, right? Every day. I was going to say, always. <laughs> right. Every day. You saw the list go out today. Yeah. Of course, I, I think I it's, shipped. It's growing, I know, I think, though, isn't it? I, it was, but okay. I shipped like 130 out today, so I it, it went down. So thank goodness. I, I shouldn't say that. Not thank goodness. I want more. But, That's yeah, right. It Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. Well, this could get some exposure. So seriously, guys, if you, there's nothing wrong with signing up for the dispatch at NWAT, N-W-A-T dot com. Right. There you go. At least check it out. So, Carlos, thanks again. Who do we have next to Carlos, Jay? I can't see. Uh, next to Carlos, we have, Lloyd? well, now, yeah, Lloyd is on the other side. We might have different screens. We have Lloyd over here. He's on the same row as Carlos. Yeah. Yeah, Lloyd. Lloyd, Lloyd might be. Oh, there he is. Come Maybe. on down. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, unmute. There you go. Hello. Lloyd, where are you at? Oh, I'm sitting in a hotel in Mariana, Florida right now. That's out not of Little Rock. Saying. Huh? Out of Little Rock. You're out of Little Rock. Okay. What do you got going on? What are you doing in Florida? No, I, like, I do a lot of the uh, dealer delivery direct to the customer. Do a lot of expedited. Um, excuse me. Do a lot of expedited, you know, delete or it's direct to the customers kind of thing. So I dropped one of the executive airport in Destin, and I'm headed down to Sarasota to pick one up and head back to Little Rock. Notice I said one. One yeah, here, one that. there. So, <laughs> wow. Expedited exclusive. They want it done. They want it now. So, like Julie says, you know, the integrity, that, that's a big one. Uh, so, I, I work with a lot of dealers. And I, I guess because if they want it done, I get it done. And they keep me busy. But yeah, hauling oh, one yeah. car uh, quite a bit. I've got an easy four, but rarely does it have four cars on it. Mm. Right, so, we'll have to. Doing my layover here in Mariana, and I'll run down to Sarasota tomorrow and pick that one up and spend the night here again tomorrow night and go home. Yeah. Now, you've been in this game for a little while, haven't you, if I remember right? Just over a year. Just over a year now. Yeah. I've got two trucks now. I run the 450, uh, F450, and I've got an F350, so I've got one driver uh, running, keeping us busy. Good. And what Can't do you what you run load boards, dealers. I mean, as you said, you obviously have a dealer that you run expedited for. What's is there a percentage or? It's... Yeah, I'm probably eighty percent dealers. My you know dealers I've got that relationship with, and then about twenty percent load board. I see some of Julie's stuff listed out of Shreveport. I try and it seems like time never works out, and that. And so like you know here and things that I'm running down here is single cars, but it's just time constraints. Time's not working out to put anything else on. Because sometimes that's, and like Harrison was saying, you know, or some, whoever it was with the auctions, for the Harrison said, you know, by the, by the dollar a minute, those auctions can really eat up your time trying to find the cars and stuff. And well, like my other driver, he deadheaded from Omaha today all the way back to Little Rock just to satisfy, had better integrity to take care of the customer. Because you know, I could have got something out of Kansas City, but. Nah, it's just not worth the time. 
it's, it's better for me just to go ahead and deadhead 500 miles than it is to deal with these auctions sometimes. Yeah, Julie, I see you shaking your head. <laughs> oh, I understand that the auctions, I tell you, ever since, you know, the COVID, it was bad enough before COVID, but once COVID hit and they put all these new rules and regulations in place and they've never relaxed them, it's, it's just archaic how long it takes you to get vehicles out of the auctions. And they, I mean, I, I don't know if there's any auctions listening, don't kill me, but they won't lift a finger to help you. I'm telling you what, they, they have skeleton crews and it's just survival of the fittest when you get there. It's a, it's a tough go. I, I don't have trucks right now. I don't think I would do well with that. So what's interesting is I had a relationship um, with a carrier. Oh, I, I think they're like a brokerage, yeah. And they have a lot of business with Copart and um, IAA, right? And so they had, I don't know, it was over seven, over seventy-five cars that they needed transported throughout the state of Florida. And they were all at seventy dollars a car. And you would think, okay, the mileage. That makes sense, but no, because you have to, now with these new restrictions, you have to be there no later than 3 o'clock to pick up or drop off. You got to get in line. These cars are not ready. And then you try to tell the, the broker, listen, nobody's willing to do this for less than $100 because mm -hmm. of the circumstances that are there, and they don't get it. Right. So meanwhile, you have 75 cars sitting there for three weeks now that you absolutely need to be moved. But you'd rather stay at your 70 than go up a little to just get these cars in motion. I don't right. understand, but okay. <laughs> well, we uh, probably about six years ago, maybe it was longer than that, we just made a company-wide decision policy that we will not send a truck to a co-part or an IAA it's not worth the time or the aggravation and or the potential damage to your equipment. So we stay as far away from there as we can. So I wouldn't want to send a sub hauler in either. So we just don't book that work. Yeah, great advice. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving here. I'm gonna, uh, who's, I can't see who that is. Hold on, let me see. Who's Let's over there by Carlos? Here. Okay. JJS? Uh, oh, yeah, you got KJS and Bart Landon's on the same oh, row. Bart. With... Okay, Bart. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, buddy. Are you there? Bart. Oh, okay, oh skip... Bart, come on down. I'm going to skip. You're Bart the next the contestant. I... <laughs> Who do we got down there? Oh, there's Bart. Right there. I'm sorry. I'm here. Hey, buddy. What's going on? Hey, Bart. I'm here. I'm alive. What are you doing? Not much. Just got home. Just got home. Oh, good. Oh, well. From, I live in Wellsburg. I'm in Wellsburg, New York. So, kind of like the. That's good. Can you hear me? Yeah, barely. It's kind of a little it's cracky. It's in and out. Yeah, it's in and out. I might. You might let me be go on. Andrew. Let me go to Andrew real quick. I got Andrew. Uh, the reason I got Andrew, Andrew's got some really good stuff to share with us tonight. I'm excited about it. Andrew's our enclosed guy, by the way. Uh, yeah, and, and Ty teased it pretty well, Andrew, because I, I really am curious. I don't know what you're going to talk about. I have no idea. I might. I'm, I'm yeah, a little nervous. I think I'm nervous. <laughs> Okay. Um, how's it going, everybody? I'm Andrew Circa. My company is Secure Motor Transport. I'm a two-car enclosed carrier based out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, <laughs> all right. It's going to be a little bit of a long one. So I started transporting for two of my dad's buddies who have car collections upwards of about 450, 500 cars collectively between the two guys. Um, I've always been good at driving trailers. It was something I loved to do. So kind of while I was in college and years after, um, it's what I've been doing part time while I keep a day job at American Express. Um, I'll drive at night if it's quick runs, two hours overnight, three hours overnight, whatever. Um, a lot of my weekends I end up driving. Um, I ended up finding out that I do have a deep passion for it and that I do love doing it, especially with the uh, exotic and classic car market. Um, from there, I decided, okay, let's see, you know, I'll create a business plan, run financials, do some more market research, 
network a little more, um, see what I can do to kind of go off on my own. Um, kind of skipping a little too far forward, but the truck and trailer that I drive is currently owned by the two guys who own all of these cars. So I don't pay for the insurance. I don't pay for any of that. They cover a lot of the overhead and then they just pay me essentially for my time um, to haul their cars from their different houses throughout the US. It's kind of how, it's a very unique gig um, and I do enjoy it. So fast forward, um, I spent about 18 months um, in whatever spare time I had creating the business plan, doing the market research, tar- talking with insurance agents, um, going and talking with private little exotic showrooms in the Scottsdale Air Park. I mean, I, I did it all. Um, <clears throat> I secured my investor, um, or so I thought, as we'll come to find out. Um, and that was going well. Um, I did create a backup plan. Um, I reached out to the SBA, Small Business Administration, um, presented them with my case um, and the information that I had and what I had about six years out of financials. Um, projected expenses and revenue, startup costs, et cetera. Um, those lenders ended up telling me that with the incoming administration, that is our current administration, that there were too many unknown variables in play um, for potential hikes in certain costs, i.e. what we've talked about a lot, insurance, fuel, um, things of that nature, and even you know, kind of uh, getting rid of the middleman per se and kind of going up to larger enclosed carriers like Reliable um, and people like that. So that, that was off the table. Um, I then reached out to a close buddy of mine who has a nice network of investors, um, presented them with the case. Again, everything looked great. They loved it, no problems. Um, but they wanted about 25% equity in my company for about a $200,000 loan, um, which was not, I'm not okay with that. Um, you know, I put in a lot of the sweat equity per se to get to the point where I'm at. Um, so I wasn't very keen on that. So I turned them down. Um, then I went to Dun and Bradstreet, and Dun and Bradstreet. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's a way for you to get a business line of credit. Um, the business line of credit, even with a pay at X score of eighty, only offered me roughly eighty thousand dollars in a business line of credit. So, well, long and short, those backup plans were off the table. So I was still betting on this investor who I've known for years, um, have a personal relationship with. Everything was going fine. There was a contract that was signed. Everything was in place. Now, all of a sudden, we're starting to come out of COVID, and he has just been told that he's lost one of his biggest contracts, which is about 30% of his revenue. So that 30% of his revenue, there goes Andrew's startup money. Um, And within that time, Andrew has put down roughly $12,000 on his new $55,000 Sundowner two-car enclosed custom with a bedroom and the gooseneck overhang. I mean, the Taj Mahal of trailers, right? Because I figure, okay, I'm going to go into it. I've established a client base driving for these two guys. They've got a bunch of friends that want me to do it for them. I'm ready. I've done all the homework. Um, Investor backs out. And I'm not sure what to do at that point. Um, I'm out, you know, 12 grand, a lot of time. Um, However, it's a learning experience. Um, One thing I do want to touch on that's really important in relation to Ty is the single phrase of anything that he ever says on this channel, car hauling is not easy. Don't overlook that phrase as just a phrase. Don't just say, oh, yeah, car hauling is not easy. We all know that. We get it it's, it's not easy. Like there is nothing about it that is easy. Every day there's roadblocks. Every day there's issues that arise. Cars get smashed. People don't call. They don't pick up. They don't pay on time, whatever. Um, so long and short, I've decided that I'm going to continue driving privately for these two collectors, um, continue to save up, um, my own cash, um, potentially start up a different venture, um, within the exotic classic car space. That's a lot less capital intensive um, that I can fund myself. Um, kind of use that to get my name out there even more. Um, continue to stockpile cash, and then uh, when the time's right, you know, potentially go ahead and start up from where I left off. Um, where I wanted to continue with that was, I think, and I'm not trying to get political. Um, I definitely hang one side of the aisle versus the other. Um, I'm not too fond of the current administration. However, I think it's important for us to realize that. There are certain tendencies and policies that over time, different administrations lean to versus another. So for example, our current one likes more regulation. 
Um, they believe that, you know, offshoring our fuel um, is a better alternative. Um, so, you know, our fuel costs have gone up as a lot of you guys have seen. They're talking about raising the insurance premium, um, talking about potentially messing with the hours of service. They're making it considerably harder for the smaller guys like all of us on this channel to operate a business and put food on our tables. And to me, from what I see, that's trying to get rid of the middleman. That's trying to get that guy out of there. So companies like Reliable and Amazon, Carvana and Vroom and all these other companies can take over the space to, and they can then regulate them more because there's not as many people to control. So it's very important to pay attention to external circumstances. Um, for example, I lost my investor because of COVID and a lot of his revenue fell through. Um, so that fund money that he had to give to me is now gone. Um, that's just life. That's just the way it goes. Um, I'll figure it out. I always do. You know, I'm, I'm very uh, entrepreneur in spirit, but I guess I came on here this evening and I've been kind of quiet for the last couple of weeks, kind of figuring out how I'm going to pivot, what I'm going to do. And as I've told you guys, I've, uh, I've figured out what I'm going to do, just continue driving and potentially start a different venture. But, um, if you guys are committed, be committed. You're either all in or you're all out. There's no in between. I mean, I sacrificed weekends out. I sacrificed vacations. I sacrificed Christmas, family birthdays to drive, to do research, to put together a business plan, to go meet with lenders, to you name it. But it's it's sacrifice. And it's only do this if you want to like, really want to do it. If you don't want to really want to do it and you're just like, ah, I mean, cars are kind of cool and driving a truck seems cool. There's a big horn and everybody gets out of your way and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's fine, but you're not going to make it very long. Um, so just ensure that you're going into this with the mindset of I'm willing to die for this. No matter what, at all costs, I will die for this. And if that's not your mentality, I suggest looking for a different profession. Mm. Whoa, man, uh, I knew was Andrew was on fire. Oh, wait a minute. Jay, ring the bell. Yeah, Jay, where's the bell? <laughs> bang, bang. Julie, what do you got on that? Well, I, he's, I mean, spot on. There's, there's a lot of things that you just, if you are not all in, you need to be all out. It's, it's not part way in. This is a job that will consume every moment. It will take away a lot of your family time. It will make you miss birthdays and it will make you miss graduations. It will be the job that sneaks up on you when you least expect it. But it all goes back to, you know, and this is what we've always had to tell some of our drivers families is, if you don't want a broke man, you got to put up with a busy man. It's, there's just no in between in this job. It's, it's a passion. This is not just something fun to go do for a week or two. It's you either have to have a passion for it, or you have to, like he said, go find something else to do because this isn't for you. It's not for the weak of heart. <clears throat> yeah. And I get a lot of calls too, by the way, that, Hey, I just maybe want to do this part-time just so I can drive around and see the country. <laughs> You know, I, I think, well, is it, okay, so this is a good, it might very well be possible with the load board, with the technology, but the, but I think, and Julie, Julie's a good one to bounce this off of, I still think you're going to run into more than you would expect, if that makes any sense at all. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's just never as easy as I think it's going to be. Right. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I'm just going to run up to the auction. It's just down the road. I'm just going to grab nine cars. I'll just load them. I just, I'll be right back mm -hmm. two days later. <laughs> right? <laughs> Literally. That car doesn't start and the other one can't be found. And somebody took the keys for this one and there's no gate pass or it's not paid for. And yeah, it's, it's never as easy. Lloyd's going to jet. Lloyd, thanks for coming, buddy. Bye. I think this old woman's going to go to bed too. Okay, Julie. Thank you so much. All right. Really thanks, awesome. guys. Bye, Thanks, good everybody. Night. All right, thank good you, night. Julie. Take yep, care. Thank you. Yep. Good hey, night. Ty, just uh, one more thing before I uh, continue. Let somebody else talk. Um, I think it's important to realize too that if you truly are all in, one hundred percent, and you're committed no matter what to miss the birthdays and the graduations or whatever, you need to understand that the the roadblocks and the failures are all part of the process. It's like getting no getting told no five times and then on your seventh time getting a yes. It's, you've got to lead up to that. There's no, I walked into the Ferrari dealership and was like, hey, I've got 
$500,000 in cargo insurance, a million dollar general liability policy and a sweet rig out front. You don't know me from the hole in the ground, but I want all your Ferraris. They're going to tell you to pack your bag and get out. Um, so I, I think it's just super important to remember that there's always going to be a problem. There's always going to be a roadblock, a blown tire, a hydraulic lift gone out, a client's car that got smashed when you didn't mean to. There's the gate passes. I mean, there's endless problems. So for anybody that's like, oh, this could be fun. I might want to do it you need to do some more research and talk with Ty a little bit more and figure out whether or not you want to be here for sure or not, because this is all, everything that I've dealt with in the last two weeks, it came, I was on cloud nine before that and a hurricane came and uprooted everything. And I had to figure out how to pivot and move on. Um, luckily I have a very unique situation. I can fall back on these two collectors and I can just continue to do that. My other venture, but a lot of people aren't as lucky. So before you go devoting a bunch of time and money and energy and time away from family, just really ensure that this is something you're really keen on doing. So thanks for the time tonight, Ty. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Well, it's again, this isn't, uh, this is, this is real. This is round table, real reality check. And that's why I was excited to have Harrison on. That's why I'm excited to have Andrew talk about this. Actually, I mean, I enjoy having everybody here. Uh, Jake, just to uh, like uh, set the stage real quick, the I'm muted. That never happens. I got muted on my own show. Hey, I got one piece of housekeeping here. Um, I've got to. I got to jump in the live chat. <laughs> Nick Medor, he rang the bell. Okay, Whoa. during uh, when Andrew was talking, and I want to read what uh, what Nick put in. Nick says, and this is uh, MVS Canada, Nick Medor. I know some transporters that haven't changed their pricing in over five years. How important is it to get your exact costs figured out? How often should you adjust your pricing? And is having a fuel surcharge a good idea? Tie. Um, that's a, that's a great question. Great point. Everybody does it different. I wish Julie was here to back me up on this. <laughs> I, I've done it, tried it all kinds of ways. So I would go to the, Hey, fuel's high. We got to do a fuel surcharge. There's all kinds of, you know, things to justify that formulas calculate. Here's what it is. If you go for me personally, cause I have a client base, I have a relationship with the dealer. What I found over the years that works better for me and for the dealer, the customer, is, hey, the fuel's going up. I'm going to throw another five or ten bucks on each car. Do you care? No, Ty, that's fine. Well, that five or ten bucks and the dealers that might be watching this, <clears throat> they're okay with that. And when the fuel goes down, it stays the same. So that's my rate increase. And I don't do. So for me, it, it always turned out to generate more money than a fuel surcharge. So what I would do personally, and, and Julie touched on a lot of really cool things that, you know, some people might call what what the, what the we're saying, some people might say, well, you're just buying business and that's not smart. And I, I can understand that logic, but if you know this business well, buying business works a lot more than you would think. So. That relationship with the dealer, <clears throat> customer, fuel goes up. I know my costs. I, I, what I try to do is I try to ride it out just to the point where I know, okay, it's time. And so I kind of start planting the seed. Hey, fuel's going up. Yeah, I know. Fuel's going up. Yeah, I know. Okay, well, I'm going to raise your rate. A what? Well, we've been talking about it for about a month. Remember fuel's going up? Oh, yeah, yeah. What are we need? What are we gonna do? Well, we can do a fuel surcharge, or I like. It. How about another ten bucks a car? Is that cool? Yeah. And so whatever that works, that works for my lane. <clears throat> and so if we if we had, okay, we've got. Uh, uh, I just went blank. I'm sorry. Oh, Lionel. <laughs> Man, it's, wow. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's getting late. Yeah. Wow, I've been up since 4 a.m., guys. I got Lionel here. Lionel, Lionel will have something to say, and it will be different than what I say, and it will probably have worked for Lionel. So let's let's test what I just said. Lionel, what what did you used to do? 
Um, in oh, retrospect, the fuel. The fuel. The fuel. Yeah. Um, what you, do with that? you always want to challenge the circumstance of your costs on a day to day basis because it's it's just really it's really hard to gauge that. So normally, um, you know, just just like Julie was saying, you you want to do your own performer based on what your fuel cost is at that moment. Once you do that, normally it turned into asking, just like you said, for a few more dollars for the car that you're hauling to make the adjustment to make it fair. Now, we didn't we didn't go off the scale in retrospect to that, because like you said, you know, 10, 15 bucks or so was fine. But most of the time it was twenty five uh, because uh, we were running long. So I mean, it, it you know it bounces back and forth between that based on how you're how you're hauling and stuff. But uh, we did give back uh, in in terms of, of of if you know we didn't have to have the ten to twenty five dollars every time. It's just depend upon you know what what the situation was out there on the road with the fuel or you know the situation or whatever the case is or you know you're haul, you've hauled enough for them to eat a little bit just you know because they've given you so much business. So, you know, you, you want to be fair in, in retrospect to how that works. And work if you work off a performer, you, you will definitely find it better doing it that way because profits are tight. Profits are extremely tight. You got to I mean, you got to go down to, to, to basically the nickel of, of, of you know, what, you, what you're doing so you can be fair all the way around. So you stay in business. Right. Now, you used a good word that I used the other day. Since you brought it up, I'm going to let you explain it. Tell us what a pro forma is. Um, a performer is basically before you go out or even if you start business, which is a great idea, uh, get, as, get as much as what you can find out in terms of what costs what. Find out what the fuel cost is. Uh, find out what your insurance cost could be. Um, I mean, anything in relationship to the, the, the cost of maintenance on your truck, your trailer, uh, I got a guy right now. Uh, he's, uh, hopefully, he's on this evening. His name is uh, Dwayne down in uh, in Maryland. He's getting ready to get started, and uh, you know, Dwayne went down and took his trailer apart and repacked his axles and greased them up. And you know, he hasn't been out yet. You know, but he understands that by by so doing this on his own, he's becoming more familiar with his equipment and. Uh, you know, he, he's really getting into to, 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 to the to the meat of it like you're supposed to. He's learning more and more how much the, the, the brake drums cost, how much the brakes cost, uh, all the necessary expectations before you get out there on the road. And it's just, the more data that you can gather, uh, it, it's going to be a lot easier going into the future. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Okay. I know Lawrence sent me a text. He's driving in the mountains and doesn't have a very good signal. But Chris is, is I don't know if Chris is Chris, are you here? Yeah, Ty, I'm here. Camera's out though. But what? Oh, camera's out. No problem. And we're just excited to have you, Chris. Could tell us tell us a little bit about you. I'm really excited Chris is here. And sorry you're the probably the last guy on the to get to no, talk. that's fine. You know, I work till two a.m. with Carmack. Hey. <laughs> with who? Yeah. Well, Lyle and I had spoke on Friday, so basically, I'm in the midst of doing that pro forma right now. Um, you know, getting all the, the ducks in a row as far as costs and everything like that. Um, it was a good thing I called him before I started setting the business up, anyway, because he showed talked to me about a lot of things, where to register the trailer where to set up my entity and stuff like that. So right now, the only thing I have left to do is just put my financial house in order and that's have enough money behind me to get started and stay and keep going. Because Ty, you remember when we had our first phone call, you know, I worked 15 years at Mannheim, New Jersey. So I have my contacts there for transport, not to mention, I just picked up two trailers, uh, they're three car wedge. And good deal. So I'm not hurt there at all. So, and that guy who, which I got him from, we used to hold a used car license together. So he's doing transport currently. So he's kind of like my mentor through all this. So he told me like a month ago, I've done everything I need to do. It's time to get out and do it. So all I got to do is get my finances in order and I'm ready to roll. Wow. 
That's really cool. So the, I'm excited about Chris. Chris and I have spent, a, I don't know, we've talked a couple of times and I really like Chris because he's got, yep. and, it, and this is what I enjoy about what I do is because, and Chris, correct me if I'm wrong anywhere in the middle here. As we started talking, I kind of felt like you, some light bulbs started going off. Like maybe you didn't realize how much you really knew, did you? That's correct. I mean, when we, at first I was just kind of, I started following you guys back the end of last summer summer and I saw some things in the business because like I see transport coming and going out of our store and our phone call only lasted 15 minutes because you're like hey all you need to do is grab a stinger and call the people you know (laughs) and I'm like well stinger's a little steep for me right now I'm you know I mean you got to crawl before you walk and to what Andrew said I found a company that's called fund and grow and I mentioned it to Lionel that will help you with business credit. So if Andrew's still listening, he might want to give those folks a call and see what they could possibly do for him. It's fund and grow. Andrew That's correct. Thumbs up. So he's, he's got it. Jay's going to probably put it in the live chat, fund and grow. So yeah, I think- you've been in the auction world. what did you say? 15 years, 15 years. I was with Mannheim, New Jersey. Right. And then you now, who, what are you doing now? Uh, I work currently for CarMax down here in Turnersville. I'm in New Jersey and I'm on the production side of everything. So my main function is, you know, running Diag, which was pretty much the same thing up at Mannheim. Um, our mechanic, uh, post-sale, pre-sale, certifying cars. So, you know, I run the road test, check everything, verify what needs to be done to the car. Then we shoot it into production line and it gets done and then it's out for sale. Wow. Well, <clears throat> so everybody here, Barton, I don't know if you, uh, if your internet picked back up or not, but we kind of cut uh, you off a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, there you go. What, what where are you at again? Uh, Wellsburg, New York, up by Binghamton, New York. New York. Okay. And are you in the business or wanting in the, to get in? No, actually, I am. A, I actually have an eight car Sun Valley that I just purchased probably three months ago. Bought my tractor trailer, bought my truck. Um, I don't know, I've been doing it for about five years, work for other people, and I just got tired of dealing with their bullshit. So I went some results. <laughs> did it for myself it's just easier that way yeah and i did talk to a couple of dealers i got hooked up with three different dealers um doing directing um hauling cars from buffalo to them in corning and and then a couple out of syracuse and out of Mannheim, and then michigan of course and stuff like that so I got some really good contacts. I got hooked up with a really good guy down at Mannheim, PA. Down at the Mannheim Adcock. Got really good hook up with them. So, been good. busy. I've been gout since 3 o'clock this morning, so I just got Ooh. home not too long ago. So, oh. I'm a little tired. Yeah, I hear you. I'm getting there, it's too. Pretty good. Well, that's good. So, uh, Mark, we kind of cut Mark off a little bit there, but I, I feel like this was a good round table. It kind of illustrated a lot of different things that I think are important in, you know, by having Andrew share his story and, and kind of some of those challenges, Harrison, some of the things he went through, Jackie. Uh, I think that we I all... Wanna, I want to jump in and say something. Yeah. So do you remember the, in the beginning of the show, I talked about, I had a YouTube comment where a guy, we were talking about Car Hauler Boot Camp, and he said, where's the video and discussion about how to strap down a wheel? Where would you put that on the list of top 20 things you need to know before you get into car hauling? I'm going to let Mark answer that, because I think Mark knows that answer, too. Mark actually used to own some trucks and trailers and transported, and he knows that. So I've, I've talked. Let's, Mark, what do you think? Well, um, when I was doing, so the, the strap and strapping was, um, it's kind of newer technology back when, when I started. So it was, 
we used to uh, use chains and pull down and the tie downs. So we used a lot of chain in my day, but the, uh, the strapping and the technology behind the strapping, I think has actually come a long way. And it, it is an important thing because that that's what's going to stop you from damaging vehicles and not damaging vehicles will let you do it tomorrow and the next day and the next day and Lionel won't have to call you and go dude <laughs> come on can you strap something down for me come on stop damaging my cars your cars Julie's cars so I think it's important I don't know on okay. um, well, I'm going to take another shot at it here we go because yeah. what I said to Ty was this let's say Let's say you were working at Foot Locker and you just got, you just lost your job. I chose Foot Locker out of the hat. Okay, it could be anything. Okay, here you are. You, you want to get a car. What's the first thing? And I don't, how do I say this better? Because, Ty, what you said is your first question was do you have a CDL? Not do you know how to strap down a wheel? That's what I'm trying to get at. Not that it's not important. But Ty, take it away. You're 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 helping me. I know it's late, but yeah, maybe it's well, getting. I think it's getting to me too. Yeah, it's getting late. <laughs> the, the, the point the point is is it, here's here's my takeaway that if if you're wanting to go drive for somebody, that's great. But here's 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 the step. Do you have a CDL? Do you think? Are you dirty? You know. Then it goes back to some of the characteristics I talked about. What's your temperament? I mean, it's really important to know your temperament. And I think the other part of it is, and I think Catherine kind of touched on it, somebody did tonight, which is if you're coming in this for the money, because, because here's the thing, the reality is, guys, and you, you don't hear me say this much, very, very rare, you can make a lot of money hauling cars if you do it right. Lionel? And, and um, yeah, go I ahead. Just a little something on to what you guys are, are and I'm saying. not picking on, I'm not picking on that comment I just want to I want to draw attention to oh, the no, it's the very, of, yeah it's a good question I'm glad you touch touching on this yeah, Jay cool one of the main questions I asked most of the guys and they'll, and, and they'll tell you uh Chris I asked him uh, uh most of the guys that Jay uh, are in tie direct towards me the question is do you want to be a business person or do you want to be a truck driver you must make the differentiation between the two before you get yourself involved. And he said it so much better than I did. Good job, Lionel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm way tired. I'm done. So, but I want to. I want to get <laughs> one thing here to uh, in Lionel. Everybody on the East Coast, thank you so much. Uh, there's something coming up in May, and I need to. Mark knows something about that. What's coming up in May, Mark? Mm -hmm. Uh, May 11th, we're going to do uh, a panel discussion. What Superflow is Systems. Okay, Superflow Super Systems. Systems. So Mark's going to have a show. That, tonight was really cool. The very beginning of that, I think we could have almost done a show just right there. Julie. Oh, no, right. The table. right. <clears throat> Not that the round, the round table is awesome, don't, but Julie's brings a lot of insight. And seeing that, you know, we didn't rehearse any of that, guys. That was all just talk. And to see how those things connect, you've got a, a carrier broker, you've got uh, Mark, you've got the insurance. And to see these, so kind of back to what Jay's talking about, <clears throat> there, we're here to help as much as we can at any part. If you want to go work for somebody, we, we know people that are looking for drivers. We can help you, right? If you're wanting to start your business, give us a call. When we've got people like, Julie, and, you know, Joe Bacardi, he's in the in the live chat, uh, Mark, Lionel. And what's fun, if you guys are really paying attention, you'll see Lionel's talked to almost all these people that I've talked to. Pretty close. That ought to tell you something. This well, is a tight group. It, what, what, you just, what you just said and kind of what Lionel's saying, and I've said this too before in, in different ways, is that I, think what that I think what that guy is hitting upon is you're right. I keep talking about auto transport business boot camp and he was talking about yeah. car hauler driver boot camp yeah it's that's, two totally that's on him he said people yeah. <laughs> it's the internet man i mean go look at the clickbait down the well, street for car haulers right well no but he, but he points something out 
it's, it's good. It's it really it's good. And I think that's one of the things that. So when we when we see the videos of you know the, is this for the businessman? Is this for the driver? Or is this just for nobody? I mean, is well, who is this for? Yeah. Well, and Lionel, Jeffrey know. Lionel said it right. So do you want to be a, a businessman or do you want to be a driver? Is that what he said, Lionel? Yes, indeed. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that, and John now, raised his hand. I don't want. To, I don't want to let John finish your oh. thought, Lionel. Please. Oh no, no problem. I was. I was just saying. I was just touching on the same thing that uh, Ty said. That's a bit important question for us because I need to understand which direction to take the person with the answer to that question because that person needs to understand at some point in time being a business person. You know, Ray Crack Croc had to get off the fryer at some point in time in order to make the establishment we know as McDonald's today. And if that's the way you see yourself as a business, fine. But if you want to stay on the fryer, you can do that too. There are plenty of business that uh, look at themselves as a circumstance of success for running their own thing and they want to drive their own truck and they covet the truck th itself. So, you know, it's harder to perform like that because, you know, you're, you're your own person. If something happens to you, uh, like like I was saying, my wife, like I said, she she she's done the job. I, I went down. She went, you know, she went loaded and unloaded. Uh, you know what I mean? Every, every extension of what I've been able to do when, when I went down, I, I, I actually had an operation. She had to go do it. Oh, I am. <laughs> hey, guys, um, we got something really interesting in the live chat. I, I don't think I've seen this before. And I'm, I guess I'm going to ask for confirmation. Spencer says, I think you need this more than I do, y'all trash. Is that real? Is that? If it was real, it'd be that, 20 bucks. What... 20 bucks. Come on, Spencer. Two, is, it, is that two? real? Come on. Yeah, come on, Spencer. <laughs> come on, dude. Spencer's been up a little late. <laughs> <laughs> what was it again? I missed... What do you think he's thinking? Spencer says, I think you need this more than I do, y'all trash. Yeah. Well, Spencer, now, I'm, I'm oh, telling you. We'll figure it out. You got I, my number. Yeah, send time. Yeah, Let's contact time. Call. I'm inclined to think you're kidding, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe you're not. Let's see what John's got. Let's wrap this yeah, up. What's, yeah, John, what's going on? I right, on that call. My question is, is does Lionel handle insurance for, like, the Maryland area? Uh, it it. You know, I, I'm I'm I do most states, but even the ones that I don't, I'm still going to help. Yep. I was wondering if you could help me get a quote or tell me if I got a quote from Progressive, and I was didn't know if you could beat it or whatever. Well, so I, well, the foundation of that, I won't go into that. There is a video that we we did make uh, uh, with Jay, and I would suggest you go look, look. It's a short version of that. It's about 15 minutes. And uh, you could probably look at that, and it covers a lot of the areas that I that I you know asked the question because have you set up your company yet? No, not yet. I'm still in the planning. That's, That's good. I don't I don't say it because I expect you to have the company set up. I I, I said it because you got an opportunity now to once again you you, you can build your you, you know your your building based on solid foundation with that. Right. Mm -hmm. You get the opportunity to do that. Most guys, and Ty will probably tell you this, hey, I already got the truck. I already got the trailer. Uh, I already set the company up. What do I do? That's that's normally the call we're getting. <laughs> oh, um, and I have a, a nice, clean slate to help you build up correctly. That yeah. way you don't, you know, cost yourself so much, you know, you don't need to, you know, cost yourself so much money and expenses, you know, doing what it is that, you know, when, when you get out there. All right. How do I find that video? Well, I just posted it in the live chat, but that doesn't help you. So I'm going to post it in the chat in the... Uh, I just posted it right there in the chat, in the Zoom chat. Now, and I just want to confirm, Lionel, we're talking about the... It's the auto transport insurance video with you, right? It was that video yeah. edit? Okay. Yeah, with the edit. The edit one is, is pretty consolidated and hits on some solid points. But, you know, we're willing to talk. You know, talking's free. If you have any open questions, you can call us anytime. 15 minutes. That's it. Yep. It's called New Auto Transport Insurance Advice with Lionel Start Car Hauling Tips. All right. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at that. You can't find it. I'm going, my kids are in bed and I'm 
ready to follow them. <laughs> yeah, we all are. We're, uh, I think the, uh, yeah, the sleepover, I think the parents are going to turn the lights out. The pizza's gone. Yep. There's not much Where soda left. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I'm out. Nope, it's empty. Yeah. There it is. It's empty, man. Thank you, Thank you guys. Thank you guys Thank so, you so much. much. Night, uh, really appreciate night. everybody. And, and you know what's neat, too, is I see the faces. Jackie, I loved what you were talking about with what's going on in brokering. And John with, you know, what's going on with the house. And and Carlos with the trailer. Um, and Bart, I, I get to learn more about your business. I mean, I do. I love this format. And I love seeing everybody. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And good night. And, and and Mark, I'll talk to you tomorrow, buddy. Okay, very good. Okay, man. Thanks. Have a good night. All right. Good night, you guys. Good night, Lionel. That is pretty much the end of the show. Um, so I am. Uh, I'm going to close it out. It's uh, oh, it's a quarter to eleven. We made it pretty far. And I really, I thank everybody that. Said hello in the live chat here. I'll end this meeting here so it's official. Um, thank you guys so much for saying hello in the live chat, for participating, for sharing information, for your praise, your questions. Um, love it when this shows up five weeks late. Spencer, we don't know what you're talking about, but we do want to know. Um, so feel free. I, I, my suggestion, Spencer, is reach out to Ty. Um most of the folks that are in tune with what's going on on ATI agree in some fashion of the way that we're connecting with the community, but you don't have to. Also, you can't please 100% of the people 100% of the time. We all do know that. Um, that's just the way life is. That's the way business is. But we do the best we can. So in the meantime, I want to thank, I want to thank Murphy Auto Transport Services. Thank you so much, Sue. I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you, Superflow Systems. Thank you, Mark, for joining us on the roundtable. Talk to you tomorrow. We're looking forward to your May 11th show. Thank you, United Road. Do go visit GoNVTA.org. And uh, there's a knowledge center. And also, uh, give me some feedback. Let me know. After you talk to them, and be sure to mention ATI because you can get a discount. Let me know how it's going because it's a new organization launch and they're looking for feedback. So let us know. Thank you so much, Julie Delp of Nationwide Auto Transport, for taking the time to join us tonight. Thank you, Ty, Cars on the Move, my co-host on Friday, my friend and Carrier Relations VP, for managing the session tonight. Again, great roundtable. It was incredible. Uh, thank you, Lionel, for the insurance information. You can visit, you can find out more about Lionel at, I think, I, I think I've got the link here, you go to auto-hauler.com. That's how you can get in touch with Lionel. And we also talked about that video. There's a link in the live chat. I want to thank everybody that joined the roundtable tonight to share information. Um, Andrew, Carlos, John, John. We had uh, Lloyd. I know I'm leaving some people out. It's hard to remember right now, but um, amazing information. I'm going to go back. Do me a favor. Give me 24 to 48 hours. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to uh, make the description below the video. Give it time codes, information. If you need contact information, if you need to find out how to get a hold of Julie or somebody else that you saw that you want to network with, maybe Catherine or Jackie, just let me know. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Thank you all so much for tuning in on Tuesday Night's Live. You know, I go live four times a week. So, And also, thanks for all the super chats and the support. Join us tomorrow on DOT Compliance. If you're right there, you've got an authority question, you got a DOT question, ELD, IRP, apportion plates, load distribution, you just bought some equipment, you want to make sure you don't get stuck, you're doing it wrong, you don't want to do it wrong. Find out how we can help you. It's only 30 minute show starting at noon on Wednesdays. Join us. Otherwise, thank you guys so much. Have a good evening. Thanks for staying up with us. Stay safe. And we'll see you soon. Peace out, everybody. Take care.